Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to another Mac 84 live stream. My name is Steve. This is Mac 84 live stream. That's what you're gonna get. So, my goodness, we have a lot of people in the chat already. Almost 20 people. We didn't even get started yet. Hello, hello. Let me pop the chat out here. Got a bunch of people to say hello to, and we're gonna minimize that. And my goodness, all right, let's start all the way from the top. And AA was the first person to say hello. I don't know what your initials are, but you chose to have initials, so you are AA. And Raw Elements, we also have Scarlet Swordfish. We have Dana, who does stuff. We have Action Retro. We have Brandon. Hello, Brandon. We have Menno34, uh, Gaming Extra, uh, Nolan, Tobias, Joe, Christopher, JQ. Another, uh, um, okay, so uh, initials are popular today. Uh, NK Morpheus, hello. Uh, let's see. <laughs> this is what you get. These are the jokes, kid. Um, and Christian, hello, Christian. And uh, Joe, right off the bat. Oh, boy. Yeah, that sounds like fun. And the Chief, hello. Hello. All right. So, first off, um, <laughs> since Brandon, since you're here, this Macintosh SE has been giving me nothing but trouble. Absolutely nothing but trouble. I can't tell you how many hours I've looked at that thing already. So, uh, we may have to just send back your other goodies before we send that back, because that's giving me a headache. But anyway, <laughs> just a quick aside there. But hey, Brian, how you doing? Welcome to... Nice to see you here. Hello, Trina. And, uh, yeah, all right. Okay, so what we're going to be doing here is we are going to be looking at a bunch of stuff today. I'm sorry, I'm just moving my windows around here. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, so I I have a bunch of just random stuff that I wanted to, to show off or get done today, and that's what we're going to be doing. So there's there's real no rhyme or reason or anything. Um, Brian got his own libretto. Oh, that's cool. Hello, Matt. Welcome to the stream. What model libretto is it? I'm sure Mike from Mike's Mac Shack will be very jealous. Very jealous. Joe snapped one of the little plastic pieces that holds the RAM. Well, you know what? That's honestly to be expected. The plastic is over 30 years old. It's going to happen. I, I wouldn't get too worried about it. You could, you could hold the memory in there pretty snug. Even if you don't have all the clips in there. You use a rubber band or some twist ties or something. Well, that sounds newer than the one Mike has. Very cool. All right. So, yeah, um, usually I have a plan, but there's there's just been so much going on. I actually have been swamped with attempting to do repairs, and um, I have not NK Morpheus. I'll double check. I, I'm not the best at social media. Things tend to pile up. My apologies. Email is usually the best way to get me, um, but uh, good luck on your exam. Study hard. And oh, I'm glad my exam days are over. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, jeez, Sean. Oh. Yeah, so he wanted like $8,000 for it, didn't he? What a weirdo. Okay, good. Yeah, as long as there's one of the plastic pieces that stays in place. Uh, yeah, so Brandon's uh, Macintosh SE30 is in good condition, but any Macintosh SE or SE30 that I get Whenever I'm removing memory, and you have to put in memory to test these things, you have to remove it to clean these things. It's always so, like, ugh, I'm always so fragile, and it, it, it's so fragile, you know, it's like, geez. You know, it's, it's one of those things where it's just a little nerve-wracking. $400?! Like, crazy?! $400?! You... That better include, like, the whole computer with the box and all the manuals, and it better be sealed and recapped for $400. People are insane. Absolutely insane. I lost my train of thought that I didn't have a train of thought for. This is a return to form for my old crazy live streams where, where nothing, uh, nothing goes right. You have him email me, Sean, and I'll, I'll set him straight by just yelling at him nonstop, telling how much of a fool he is. That's where the batteries went. All right, so <laughs> it's off to a great start, guys. So I did have some things I wanted to show off. Um, I guess since this is on the desk, I'll show this off. Hello, Bruce. Welcome to the insanity. Oh, the. CD drive got stuck. There we go. Ah, da, 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 da. Yeah, eBay is going to be expensive for everything, so just avoid it if you can. Alright, so, uh, 
Just a few little things here that uh, I've gotten in the mail recently or fairly recently. And just some things I want to briefly talk about. So this is a analog standard definition composite and S video capture device. It is by no means a professional device, a fancy device, or one that's going to make your, your video quality look exceptional. But if you're just looking quick and dirty to just capture some composite or S video connections with audio over USB, uh, I just got this today. I plugged it in at work. That's the amount of testing I've done on a on on this device here. But I just want to give you a shout, uh, give give it a little bit of a, a, a sh I guess a, a shout out. I guess I don't know. But um, yeah, so this is called an Easy Cap. Um, I'm actually gonna put the link in the description here. I'm not. It's not an affiliated link or anything like that. It's just a link. Um, and it's, you know, it's on eBay, it's on AliExpress. Now, this specific model will work uh, on a Mac. I don't know about any other models or whatever. Um, there we go. Oopsie. Did that want to paste? Maybe. Uh, uh, there. Maybe that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and those of you who have, have watched some of my previous live streams, um, I am a sucker for like video capture and, and recording stuff. So this was right up my alley. Um, if the frame rate is really bad, that stinks. Let's see how all right, the cameras. All right, let me check the YouTubes. Let me just move around on the YouTubes here. Let me go to settings. Well, it says I have an excellent connection. If anybody else is having any issues, please let me know. Um, if you guys are having any quality issues of the stream, I'll, it says everything is excellent. YouTube could just be, you know, farting on, on its own end. So sorry, Bruce. Um, where was I? That's right. This thingy. So, um, you have a molar Mac, but it's dead too. Oh, that stinks. Maybe it could be fixed. My old iMac is freaking dead. It's stuck on a white screen. What iMac is that? What year iMac? 2009. Not as good as usual. See, I have a quality that I adhere to, and that quality is above crap. So if this is crap, I'm sorry. I always try and aim to be above crap. All right, let's 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 just look at OBS here. Make sure none of my settings got discombobulated. I got the video at 1080p. Yep. And the webcam is set on. Sorry. You're looking at my head there. Webcam is set to. Why is it set to 960 by. Yeah, let's change that. Sorry. The resolution on my webcam was set at a silly resolution. It should be closer to 720p now. Now, of course, I'm streaming at 1080p, so that doesn't really make much sense, but I should adjust it slightly. Slightly. Okay. Alright, so we have. We have some some things. No, this is not the new camera, and I, I think I'm actually going to return the new camera, uh, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit. So um, yeah, anyway, this thingy that if I didn't have it in my hand, I would have forgotten about exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> so uh, this thing just allows you to capture analog video and audio. Now this and a device like this that was Mac compatible about let's say 15 years ago probably would have cost upwards of 200 to 300 dollars. This was about, I don't know, 15 bucks, $17 with shipping, something like that, on AliExpress. You get on eBay and a bunch of other places. There are many models like this. Just make sure the one that you're going to grab says it's OBS compatible and Macintosh compatible. There is a driver CD that came with this, and I was very surprised. There's a Mac logo on the CD. I was very surprised that this CD actually had a driver that worked for High Sierra and Mojave. Basically, if you plug this in without a driver, QuickTime and OBS is just going to see it as an audio capture device. Has no idea how to do anything else with it. Once you install that 8 megabyte driver, boom, it works fine in QuickTime and OBS. Now, again, I have not uh, extensively played around with this thing, but it seems to be a pretty good value. And again, what, $17 shipped? Uh, I think it's a pretty safe bet. Can you recommend a VGA to HDMI adapter that will work with OBS? I sure can, Bruce. Now, I haven't tested them, but I could recommend them. <laughs> so I have this big scaler. It's a Atlona scaler, A-T-L-O-N-A. -A. Now, they make ones that are much smaller than this big old box that's basically the width of a server. Um, they make a small one that does VGA to HDMI with just one VGA input. 
And if you search on eBay, they're about $20 to $30. So again, that brand is, I'm mispronouncing it, I'm sure, Atlona, A-T-L-O-N-A. And just look for it. Uh, it'll probably have the word scalar in the title. So Atlona Scalar VGA HDMI. Now, not all of them are built the same. Not all of them are built the same. But in theory, what a scalar will do is it will take a VGA connection that is not compatible with a strict HDMI input from a television or from you know your cheapo capture boxes, and it will scale that VGA signal to be compatible with those. Now, some have audio support, some don't. You have to figure that out. Uh, that is what I could recommend. That brand just seemed to work fine for me. I'm sure there are plenty of other brands that do the same thing, but this is the only one I've had experience with. So I'm sure you could find tons of scalers out there. And they seem to be very cheap because what will happen is, you know, companies will go ahead and install this expensive equipment and then it's time to upgrade and they don't need the old stuff. So people put it on eBay, they throw it out, etc. Uh, RGB HDMI. Yes, I've seen I've seen some of those, Brian. Uh, some of those are expensive. There's there's one that was around like three hundred three hundred fifty dollars. Now the results are incredible. It, it goes from VGA or DVI right to USB three, and you got a whole bunch of options in there. But I mean, I spent fifty dollars on this USB uh, to HDMI capture box, and then this scale where I paid the shipping from from my friend Jay from the House of Moth, um, and so I need to buy power supply that for that. That was a few dollars, but Way less than 300 there. Is a Cabletron Systems Mac SE card rare? Probably. I've never heard of one. Probably. <laughs> but yes, these things do take some adjustment. Read the manual. That's that's what I would suggest. If you're looking up these models on eBay, I don't care what brand it is, look up the manual. It's a free source of information that you could usually find very easily, and you could see what the inputs it accepts, what the output it's, it, it, what the outputs uh it's capable of, etc. Um, sometimes manuals are very, very handy in telling you exactly what you could do. So again, just a cheapo composite uh, video capture device. I actually picked two, one, two of these up, one for my friend. Uh, so I'll be giving that to her so she could do some video game streaming. And uh, it was cheaper to order two from AliExpress and have it shipped from China than to get one from Amazon. So that's the, what, that's the way I went. No worries, thank you, Morpheus. I'll uh, catch up with your message. Enjoy your dinner. <laughs> exactly, you get it from work, it's free to you. Okay, cool. Uh, what else was there? Uh, I will have a video out uh, coming up Friday. We're going to be looking at a television. It's a little weird, but, you know, it's a little little fun thing about that. Uh, you'll see in the video. Um, sorry, just reading the chat here. Nice. Well, Joe, look it up. <laughs> I don't know the specs off the top of my head. I never I never had an SE growing up or an SE30 or anything like that. Um I got a broken one in middle school, and then I sold it for like a dollar or something. I got it for free anyway. Uh, and then in high school, I got another broken one, but then that turned out to just be dusty, and it worked. So, very little info on it. All right, well, uh, go on to like the Low End Mac or Vintage Macintosh Enthusiast Facebook group and just post about it there. I'm sure somebody will know what it is. Post a picture of it. Um, yeah, let me talk about the camera for a bit. So I got uh, a Sony uh, VZ1 camera, and it's a, a high-definition point-and-shoot um, camera. No worries, Christopher. Hello, Class of Mac. Um, and so I got this camera. It's a 4K uh, recording camera, and uh, I thought, you know what? It, it, I've been using my iPhone to record a lot of my videos, and before that, I was using a camcorder that I got cheaply and then I was using my Canon 60D for for some shots but that camera although it's a fantastic still camera it has no autofocus for video so I have to set up everything manually um, I had to get like a, a external charger thing for it so it wouldn't die in the middle of, of me shooting and then there's an artificial limit of how long the video files could be so if you're recording for like was it 15 or 20 minutes or whatever it is uh, it'll just stop which is fun so I figured, you know what, let me, let me, let me get a good camera because it's, it's actually at the point where it's interrupting my normal, my normal uh, shooting schedule where I come down here to make a video or something and I can't continue where my, my phone that I'm using just crashes or there's something weird with it. Um, let's say I'm using a teleprompter app on it and that's crashing too. It's just, it's not reliable enough for me to use in the in the the brief you know hour or two i get for okay let me be creative let me i'm motivated now let me go out and shoot this thing let me put this project together 
and I get everything together and then it all goes to crap. So I figured, let me go buy a new camera. And I was doing some research. I didn't do that in depth of a research of this. Now, why not usually research something to buy if it's over like 50 bucks or whatever, or a hundred bucks or whatever it is. Uh, I usually make a spreadsheet. I, I go crazy with all the details and stuff like that. Just trying to compare and contrast what models are out there, what's available, when did this come out? What, you know, what are people saying about it, good and bad, etc. And so, uh, I have no idea, Joe. We just go on. There's, there's no set schedule. Um, and so, yeah, so I, I went out and bought this camera. It had glowing reviews online. And I knew its downfalls right away. I knew that its battery life was pretty poor. Um, but, you know, if you buy cheapo batteries or you buy a power adapter, that's okay. Uh, the power adapter was a weird thing. It plugs in via USB and charges via USB, which is fine. But, um, you know, that's not ideal in, in my mind. I'd rather have a dedicated charging port. You know, just a nitpick. Um, and the menu system and the buttons are a little weirdly laid out. And the little screen that comes out is a little too small for my liking. So I'm holding this thing, which is like this big. And I feel like I, I have these huge hands, which I don't. <laughs> so while the camera had pretty good uh, results, uh, I did a, a Patreon video where I recorded myself just talking in front of it. And I noticed the focus was very sharp, but it was very strobing in the background. Like it would, it would shutter or, or focus and the background would have like this black bar that goes. So I had to adjust it a little bit and then the autofocus wasn't as good. So it's like one of the reasons I bought this camera was I thought the autofocus was great. Now, Granted, I haven't played around with the settings fully. I did shoot one video, which you'll be seeing uh, Friday or whenever it comes out, with this camera, and I was pretty happy with it. Uh, because I thought to myself, the only way I'm going to be able to fully test this camera is to do a video with it. And so I'm going to just do this video about something I picked up. Quick and easy video, not too in-depth. That's what you'll see on Friday. And I thought, okay, let me let me do a video with this. And, um, it, you know, it, it, it was okay. It worked out fine. There were some quirks. Like when you put the SD card into the computer... The DCIM folder, which is what cameras have been using forever, the videos aren't there. They're in some other folder that's marked private, and then it's like MP4 clip or whatever. And so you have to like dig around for that. I don't know, that felt a little weird. And the price I paid for the camera, the camera is, is going for currently uh, $700. So the price I paid for the camera, for not too much more of an investment, I could get a DSLR capable video camera that would just you know, add so many features that maybe I'm not using now, but I would like to use in the future. And so that's something I'm, I'm considering returning that, that little point and shoot camera and, and getting a, a, something a bit more substantial. And it's something I've been saving up for and waiting for, for a while. So that's just a decision I have to make. But, uh, I, I think it's, it's a decent camera. I, I certainly think that it would be perfect for some people. Um, if you want to shoot a lot of 4k footage, probably not ideal. Uh, if you want to use an external microphone, it's fine. It has that. Um, it apparently has a great microphone. I mean, in my test, the microphone sounded pretty good, but uh, I'll probably invest in an external microphone set anyway. But uh, yeah, I mean, just just an update on that. If uh, you guys are on my Patreon and you saw that camera and I was talking about that, um, the video quality is very nice, but I, I think it just might be worth it. You know, spend a few few more dollars now, get something that's a bit more future proof. And yes, I have to buy lenses for DSLR and all that stuff, but I think it's an investment that's worthy rather than me spending the amount of money I did on the camera being kind of okay with it and then, you know, spending more money on a similar camera down the road. And I think that just makes a little, at least for me, makes a little more sense to just go all out if I can and just um, buy a, a camera that's a little bit better. So if you see me tweeting about camera nonsense, that's why. Okay, uh, what else do I want to talk about? I got some goodies. I got some goodies in the mail. I want to talk about uh, some videos past and present. So, uh, who saw the video that I did about the Atari 400, I'm sorry, the Atari 800 computer that I recapped? Who remembers that video that, that I did about the Atari 800? So, if you watched that video, the problem with one of the Atari systems that I have is the ROM was modified and hacked. You know, the ROM card had some had some interesting wires on it. And so, all right, good. So somebody somebody's paying attention. They watched it, good. So um, the problem was I needed a new ROM or I needed to fix that ROM. And so thankfully, my whole methodology with this stuff is if the part is out there, if it's cheap, don't try and fix it. Just get a replacement because even if you fix it, 
and it breaks down the road, you have a replacement lined up. So what I did was I purchased one of these, and this is an Atari ROM. So this is a 10K ROM for an Atari 400 or an 800 computer. And this is gonna replace that ROM that one, didn't have a shield on it. They took the plastic shield off. And uh, two, it didn't really work. So um, I did shoot footage of me trying to get that thing to work, and I will probably post that in a video uh, when I do a follow-up with this. But now I have the actual ROM to play around with that. So that'll be nice. Uh, ordered it probably the the, uh, the week I did that video, and, and I just, uh, you know, I'm getting to organizing these things now. Yes, it is It is quite chunky, Scarlet Swordfish. <laughs> it is quite chunky. Um, but it's cool. It has these little plastic uh, grips there and so on. So that's nice. So why am I putting it there? I'm just going to lose it. Um, oh, while I was cleaning up, I found this. Now, who could recognize this from the back? If I show you the front of this thing, everybody's going to know what it is. So who's going to recognize this if I show it from the back? Who knows what this is? Be very specific. Who knows what this is? It's not a Mac. Hint. It's not a Mac. See, I'm tricking you guys. You're not thinking about it. Good guesses. Very good guesses. This is my very first iPod. How about that? <laughs> this is my very... <laughs> Quadra 700. I wish. This is my very first iPod. This is a 5 gigabyte iPod. Very first one. Uh, I got this for Christmas ages ago. I first asked for a Palm Pilot, and then I put on my list an iPod because I thought this could do Palm Pilot things. Kind of. You could put notes in there, but it's read-only. Um, so I switched at the last minute of my list and said, no, 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 I want an iPod because the iPods like just came out, or maybe they've been out for a while. Or they No, no, they were, disc they were just discounted because the 10 gigabyte one was out when this one was out, I believe. Anyway, um, this is the, the physical spinning wheel model. So that wheel actually spins. And this is the five gigabyte model, five wire only. Yes, Brian, yep, yep. So I have I have the other one I got from there too. So that, and I only have two in total. And the reason I picked that one up, Brian, is because unfortunately the fire wire on this, it will charge, but it won't sync. So maybe that's something I could fix one of these days. But yeah, I'm, I'm really happy we were able to score those iPods because those are in pretty good condition. But yeah, this is this is funny because I, I, you know, I, I used to tell people this, oh, I got an iPod. And they're like, how'd your parents afford that? Well. Uh, cleaning up some some documents we found a uh, I found the documents for like uh, an Apple store like credit card or whatever and it was they, my dad took it out just to get the iPod for me so uh, it's cool because the paperwork has the date of when the iPod was purchased and all that stuff and it has all these like Apple brochure stuff and things like that so it's, it's a nice little thing I kept that um, but yeah this is my original iPod it looks very yellowed because that's the case that it's in uh, it's in this uh, Belkin case yeah Belkin is the brand of that case just a very simple case but uh it is it is quite scratched up there is some wear on there obviously but you can see the camera hello logitech camera and yeah like i said it will charge up but um it does not sync currently i do have the remote for it that goes in that little spot i do have the official power adapter for it and all the accessories for this thing uh, but i loved the heck out of this thing that's right matt very well loved um this, this, what iPod did I get after this? This was, this was, I remember, I remember loading over a thousand songs on it because I was trying to figure out if that was the limit to this or if you could put more songs on it. And you could, you just, you know, they weren't as long or whatever. But, um, yeah, the case is yellowed, but the iPod itself is in very good condition, kept out of sunlight and stuff like that. But I took this thing everywhere, um... It was in my car. I mean, I, I'm trying to think of the, the iPod I got after this. I think the iPod I got after this was was the iPod Video. Yeah, because I got the I got my iMac in 2006, and they were doing one of those things where you got an iMac and you got a discounted iPod or something like that. Maybe it was maybe it was a, a promotion or whatever. And so I got my video iPod, my 60 gigabyte video iPod then. And then only a year or two ago at a yard sale, maybe it was three or four years ago at this point, I got a uh, 80 gigabyte um, uh, iPod Classic. So I have this, the fifth gen, and the Classic. Those are the ones I, I purchased for a good price, like a fair amount of money. Uh, the rest, like the one I've gotten from eWaste and this iPod Mini that Mike Stanhope 
gave me from Mike's Mac Shack. Uh, that's, you know, one of the ones I like as well, especially the color. I like green. But, uh, yeah, the, the, the iPod Nanos are fun to replace with the battery because they like to swell up. But, yeah, so I found that when I was cleaning up, so that's, that's a little fun thing to talk about there. Um, we're going to talk about these in a bit. <laughs> we're we're going to talk about these in a little bit. Yes, the black spot that you thought was a sad Mac or a sad iPod. We're going to talk about these in a bit, and, and you'll see why. Um, what else do I got here? Okay, this is pretty cool. So who who here watches uh, the Retro Mac Cast? So the Retro Mac Cast is a podcast, and <laughs> no, not not that that not that much conversion technology. But if you say conversion technology three times fast, uh, I think Crazy Ken will show up. So who, if you don't subscribe and watch the Retro Maccast either on, you know, YouTube or on, you know, your podcast, wherever you get your podcast from, uh, be sure to do that because they are an awesome show. They've been doing this for years, forever. RMC is great. Yep, exactly. Macintosh Library, you, you echoed it. Exactly. Uh, Really, really got to suggest you guys watch that. I'm usually on the live stream Sunday mornings when I wake up Sunday mornings because it's a pretty early show. Uh, I was actually featured on there as a, I did a guest spot on there. Uh, Sean from Action Retro also did a guest spot on there. Um, Kate, I think they're trying to get you on there as well. And um, I actually was just watching them one morning and I was having some breakfast and uh, I was in the chat and I mentioned the, the G3 All-in-One I picked up. And they're like, oh, we'd love to see that. Can you show us? And I'm like, what? And I scrambled and I ran downstairs with the camera, and uh, and I showed them, uh, I showed them the, the the machine. That was so impromptu. Uh, let's just say um, it was a miracle I was dressed properly. So, <laughs> but that was fun. If you have not subscribed to them or watched them, please consider doing so. They only have like a few hundred subscribers on YouTube. They should have thousands more. Um, thousands, thousands more. But uh, the reason I mentioned them is on their recent uh, podcast episode, uh, they do a thing where they show off eBay finds. And there was one thing that they showed on eBay that they had to buy it now price, but I wasn't going to spend that much for it. And I ended up bidding on it and I ended up winning it. And this is a very interesting item. I've never seen this before. I didn't even hear, I didn't even know this thing existed. So when I saw it for the price, it was like $15. I just had to get it. This is a button that is celebrating the Mac 80, the Macintosh introduction in, in uh, 1984. I almost said the Mac 84. So this is the, it, it, she's not really that recognizable because it's a very artsy stylization of it. But this is the woman that, um, that throws the hammer into the big, big brother screen in the, in the 1984 ad for the Macintosh introduction. So this is a pin and the text on the, the side here says teamwork studios designed it. And it says, uh, the photography is by Andrew J. Hathaway, and the digital art is by Doug Baker. But on the other side, it says, copyright 1995, Apple Computer. So in 1995, for whatever reason, Apple made this pin. Now, I don't know if it was a giveaway. I don't know if it was at their company store. I have no idea the history behind this, and neither did the person on eBay. But for $15, uh, with the shipping and everything, I couldn't pass it up. Um, it's just this very unique thing. I've never seen it before. And, uh, oh, thank you, Dana. That's, uh, Anna Major. I'm mispronouncing that, I'm sure. But, um, it, I think it's a really neat little button. And I have a, a bunch of weird Apple buttons and pins, so this just adds to that silly collection. I'm going to have to display these somewhere at some point. That'll be really cool. When I move this desk over there and I rearrange those shelves one of these days, uh, I, I think I need to display some stuff like this. But I think that's really neat. I'm going to put it here for now so I don't lose it. But, uh, they, they showed that on the, on the Retro Mac Cast show. And I said, you know what? Uh, I would like to have that. And thankfully, nobody else bid. Uh, and I was able to grab that. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, what else did I get? Um, right, so I got I got this a while ago. And I'll talk I'll talk a little bit about this. I don't want to I don't want to completely give away. Well, I mean, I'll talk about it. Why not? We're all friends here. So. Um, Probably many of you, maybe multiple times, have watched the iMac G3 videos that I've done. And so the whole reason, hello Adam, the whole reason uh, of me getting and wanting the G3 all-in-one was to complete telling the story about the iMac G3, plus it's a really cool machine, uh, and I have the G3 mini tower and all that stuff. So if you haven't watched the iMac videos I've done, especially the first one, 
and the one I released in December. I hope to have a <laughs> maybe a few times. Yep, Jay likes those, and I, I greatly appreciate anyone who's a fan of those because those those videos are like what I want all of my videos to be. Now, of course, I can't put all the time and dedication and footage hunting for all this stuff into each one of my videos, but that is like what I really want. Uh, yeah, the first one has like thirty three thousand views, which is insane, but. Something that um, I believe it was in either the introduction of the iMac or, or one of the, the follow-up presentations that Apple gave about the iMac is the first vis version of the iMac, the revision A and B models, had a little infrared window. And that infrared window allowed you to, you know, send stuff to a printer or from a Palm Pilot or from a Newton or whatever, um, depending on the capabilities of the, the device via infrared, you could transmit data. And what was really cool about that is I remember... During the keynote or one of these presentations that Steve Jobs was, was doing, he said, you could take out your digital camera and beam your digital photos to the computer. And I thought to myself, I don't think I've ever owned a camera with an infrared port on it that maybe wasn't a PDA or something like that. So I could, could, could you actually do that? And so I started looking up cameras and, uh, well, I got one here. So this is a, a Casio QV3000EX, and it was pretty dirt cheap on eBay. Nobody wants these things anymore. Uh, and lo and behold, this little spot here is for an infrared window. I have absolutely no idea if it'll work on a Macintosh, uh, but the review back in the day said it worked on Windows 2000, so I think it's worth a shot. There was also a Kodak model uh, that was pretty popular that had an infrared port. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's a good camera, but, um, yeah, this is, this is a, what is a 3.3 megapixel camera. Now it's not, it's really not too bad. Uh, it's really not too bad. Now, let me show you some of the stuff that came in the box. Now, usually if I'm looking for like a vintage camera on eBay, I like to, I like it to have like the original accessories or whatever. Um, and this, this guy had everything. First off, here is a review from DP Review, a very good digital photography website, printed in 2002. This is a complete review. How many pages is this? This is, this is many, many pages. This guy printed out the entire review, or maybe it was printed out by the person he bought it from, uh, about the camera, So, which is, which is neat. So there's an entire review of how good or bad the camera is. Uh, the camera came out in April 2000. And this review was printed in 2002. Now, what also it came with here is the manual. So we have the full manual, which is nice. You could, there's an electronic one online. Uh, it did come with the original power adapter here. So this is to charge the batteries in the camera. You can have rechargeable batteries. And the person included rechargeable batteries in the camera. So that's very nice. And they work quite well so far. Uh, not one, but two USB cables for transferring data which is nice. Hey, Will. And uh, two compact flash cards. One's a 64 megabyte. That's megabyte, fellas, megabytes. And I believe the one in here is, uh, I think it's a 128 megabyte. Let's, let's see if we open this chunky door here. Yeah, that's a uh, 128 megabyte compact flash card. And uh, this does have micro drive support. I do have a micro drive, but I think it's, it's busted. So I don't think that's going to help. Yeah, hundreds of floppies on a single card. I know. It's 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 crazy. It is absolutely crazy. So um, I did actually uh, take some photos with this, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but I'm not done yet. It came with the video out cable. <laughs> so this thing could actually shoot little movies. So there's, um, there's a video and an audio jack here and a little mini jack there. And that plugs into the side of the camera and you could display it on your television. Uh, and it also came with a very old school looking uh, USB compact flash card reader. I mean, this just screams, the design of this thing screams early 2000s. When everything had curves and unnecessary curves, you know, this is just it's exactly what the early 2000s reminds me of design wise. It does look like a rocket. Hey, welcome. He fights for the users. Be good to that guy and so yeah so this is this is just yeah just goodies here and so let me uh actually actually i just i have a silly idea that's just it's crazy enough to work here 
crazy enough to work. It's the magic of an insane live stream where I haven't had anything planned. Uh, you could tell maybe that I've been working too hard today. All right, so I'm going to plug this into my computer. This is that little VG, uh, video capture thingy that I was talking about before. I'm going to plug in the video cable from the camera. Oh, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. And we're going to see <laughs> how beautiful these images look. <laughs> And please note, I am being sarcastic. All right. Now, this is going to take a 3 megapixel image and scale it down to composite video. I hope this works because I have not tested this. Uh, video out. And it's probably going to look like hot garbage, but why not? Let me turn the camera on here. And uh, let's see. Yes, this is a USB EZ cap thing if you re rewind the live stream. Um, it works on a Mac. It's uh, I put a link up in the... Is that link still on my clipboard? Yes, it is. Let's uh, put it... There we go. All right, there. It's from AliExpress. I'm sure you could um, uh, find uh, a similar one there. But this came with a CD which had an 8 megabyte driver on it, which you need for OBS and QuickTime. Otherwise, it just recognizes it as an audio device. But uh, <laughs> yes, yes, use uh, use that for my next video. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm returning that Sony 4K camera. I got I got 240 by 320 videos. I'm good. All right, so, so what I'm going to do here is I have to make a new scene because otherwise OBS is going to just not be happy. So let me make a new scene here. Let me set up my microphone, which was accidentally set up, set up my webcam microphone. So my previous streams, if my audio sounded horrible, that's completely my fault because I'm an idiot. Um, all right, so we're going to use this. Um, yeah, eh, that should be working, actually. But I don't think it is. <laughs> Hold, please. Um, hmm. All right, let's, uh, let's add in my webcam here so you get a picture-in-picture -picture type thing. So even while I fiddle with this, you'll be able to actually see me fiddle with it. There we go. And we're going to... This is live OBS tinkering about. Sorry. All right. And where is this bigger video capture thing? Yeah, let's do... Uh, yeah, why, why is it? Okay. So where is it? <laughs> Did I the center it or something like that? Yeah, it's one of these things where if you're if you're messing around with this, it may work and it may not. So Alright, I'm just starting to catch up with the chat here. Okay, so it's not showing right now, but let me see. There might be a, a mode I have to go into here. Um, display menu. Maybe I have to enable video out. I have the manual here, but who looks at manuals? I mean, set up. Nope, that's the wrong thing. Oh, the enter button is below the thing here. All right, video out, NTSC. And we got nothing. We got nothing so far. Um, Interesting. Uh, let me just check with QuickTime Player. Sometimes if like you have something that was being used in it, it doesn't like it, and you have to quit it or whatever. Yes, I will look at the manual in about two seconds because I'm not going to waste anybody's time. Yeah, no, it's not displaying on there. Let me. Uh, it could be a bad cable. Could be that this cable was not really meant for this thing. Could also be that this camera requires you to be in a certain mode. So let's look at the. Let's look at. Let's look at the manual. It might only output shots taken. No, it has a slideshow model uh, feature, rather. I'm saying bad, weird things. Uh, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, playback, um, folder types, image protection, deleting, connections, connected to a television. Page 99! Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Be sure to turn off the camera before. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it just says turn it on. <laughs> it doesn't say you have to do anything. It doesn't say you have to do anything fancy. So, it, it could also be that it just doesn't like this adapter dealy. Uh, let me just try auto detect. Let me try this again. If not, we won't play around with this for too long. Uh, now, the camera will work. It will take photos. Um, it could be that this port is messed up. It could also be that maybe I'm in some weird mode that the manual fails to mention. 
Um, yeah, let's go to slideshow. Maybe it has to be in slideshow mode. Slideshow start. Slideshow display. Slideshow fail. <laughs> this is not working, guys. <laughs> My confidence in this thing is uh, is is slowly dwindling. Um, let me just make sure they didn't they didn't screw around with the uh, colors here. Make sure video is actually for video and not the other way around. Because who knows? Hulk smash! Well, then th that's exactly what it was. Who makes who makes the black color for for video and the the yellow color for audio? I mean, come on, come on, come on! That's just silly. All right, so it works in QuickTime. Let me uh, let me adjust it in OBS here. If uh, if that is all possible, it was working maybe. All right, so let's go to video capture thing. Uh, let's go to. Why is it not showing it? That's so weird. That's so weird. It uh, it worked before. Uh, see, it's it's not it's not liking the um, the resolution that I set. It says use preset resolution, and I can't because when I select it, it turns red. And then when I say I want to enter in my own resolution, it doesn't like that either. So, composite video is yellow, people. Yeah. So this this might be a, a bust. Let me just uh, let me just select the uh, instead of filling with. I'll fill it with this later. Uh, let me just select the QuickTime screen here, and we'll just we'll just do a window capture because nobody wants to see me tinker around with this stuff this much. I mean, there's got to be a point to it. All right. So window capture. We're gonna go to QuickTime here, and there we go. Yeah, I mean, if I if I do set it to high, let's see. Yeah, there's no there's no resolution drop down at all. The whole menu is blank. So maybe I have to restart OBS. I'm not going to be doing that now. Okay, so here's here's the uh, the slideshow. Now this photo was taken by the person from the the previous uh, owner. Uh, here's a picture of a car wheel. Picture of a sign. Really not bad for, for a camera of this age. Really not too bad. <laughs> this is on the economy setting. So you see all the uh, 1024 by 768 of those pixels. That's a building. That's a church, I think. Stop sign. Yeah. So those are the pictures I took with this thing. So you'll probably be seeing, uh, seeing them at some point uh, if I get this to... Uh... Can I zoom in? No, maybe no. Um, so yeah, the the idea behind this camera is that these are these are new photos I took the other day, um, with the exception of this one. This came with the the owner's uh, the, the owner took this photo. <laughs> We're still on the memory card. Ooh, I should. I mean, that's kind of creepy, but I, I should put these memory cards in like one of those recovery programs and just see <laughs> see what's on there. Uh, see what what old old stuff is on there. I mean, I don't want to be creepy, but all right. So I'm going to, I'm going to go to the menu. Let's see if it shows the menu. Oh, it does. Okay. So you, you sort of get a feel for, for this. Let me expand this just a little bit bigger here. So you're not squinting as much, but I like the menu. This menu is pretty neat. So we got uh, a multi view here. <laughs> this is exactly what it says it is. Um, Let's see. We got uh, slideshow is what we were in. Setup here. Wow. <laughs> okay, Orlando, I do not feel as creepy anymore. Uh, what I do? Card browser? No, no, no. Go back. This menu is just like the 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 diagonal thing is a little bit funny to mess with. Beeping noise, language, video. Yeah, just your standard stuff here. Let's see what happens if I go to record mode. Let's see if he'll mirror it. Wait, I think it will. Maybe. Maybe. No. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> let's, do, let's do a comparison here. Which camera do you think is better? Quality. <laughs> Use this as a webcam on a Zoom meeting. Are you calling from 1999? Like, what's going on here? 
this is this is this is funny. This is not bad. I mean, obviously the uh, obviously the qual quality of this is being downgraded. Up oh, and it, it shut off there. Obviously the quality is being downgraded because we're going through composite video, which is what uh, 480 lines of interlaced resolution and three megapixels is much higher than that. But uh, it's not FireWire. It's a USB camera, but I'm using a composite video output cord on it to get a live preview. But, uh, yeah, I wonder why I went blue there. Oh, now it's back. Maybe just, oh, ooh, sweet infinity shot. Make everyone dizzy for a moment. Let's get a little picture of Mackie here. There we go. <laughs> oh, boy. That's fun. Ah, look at that smiling guy. If you have not subscribed already, I know most of you probably have, subscribe yourself to the Macintosh Librarian. She released a video not too long ago about the Macintosh and Apple systems in the education market. I think it's a really cool video. Please check that out. I'm just messing around with these uh, Zoom things here, but I don't think it's uh, actually doing anything like that. No, I mean, honestly, 3 megapixels is... is decent for a webcam what 1080p is like two megapixels or something like that so i mean this is obviously not three megapixels it's what 480 lines or whatever but yes that is a nice ipod that uh, mike gave me which is very nice next to the little r2d2 guy so yeah that's that's uh, this camera that i just wanted to show you off here and uh the point of this obviously is this will be in a video i will be um trying to beam my digital photos from this to an iMac and maybe an old PowerBook G3. Uh, so that will that will be in, uh, spoiler alert, that will be in one of the upcoming iMac videos that I end up shooting um, because I, th I think that's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm surprised that uh, it came with all these goodies. I mean, I saw the photo, but yeah, sometimes when you get a box of stuff, you're like, oh, wow, it's all here. So that was cool. But yeah, pro tip for anybody who has one of these Composite is black, not yellow. Why? Now it could, it very well could be, it very well could be that this camera cable here is not the original one. It's, this could very well just not be the original one. And all they do is swap the poles there for the pinout. And yeah. Uh, yep, no worries, Justin. I know exactly how that is because I've owed you, you a reply. But uh, just a quick update on that. Yes. Um, there's, there's some activity there. There's some life there. So um, it may... Uh, my IBM is also acting a little fussy. So who knows? Even with my original floppy drive, it's acting a little fussy. So maybe something's loose in there or whatever. But uh, that is something I got to mess around with. And short of driving over to Mike's, I don't have another IBM system to test it on. So, um, but uh, the struggle continues with those, with those floppy drives. Um, get a LaserJet 2200 to print over IR. I have a LaserJet 5000 which has an IR port on it. Now, I don't know if I could print to it. I, I don't think the printer's smart enough to accept it, scale the document, and all that stuff. Because there's really no software on that camera. There's a beam option, and that's it. It just it just sends it. So who knows? <laughs> Drive to Mike's now. We'll wait. I don't think you will. I don't think you guys will. All right. So um, I guess I guess uh, we've been... How long have we been streaming here for? It feels like 10 minutes. But it's been almost an hour. Jeez. Crazy. You take a drink of water here before I run out of steam. Thank you for the email, Joe. I will take a look. Uh, Matt's going to see if his Connectix USB webcam still works. Probably, but there's probably no drivers for modern OSs there. Um, those old Connectix uh, beige cameras that are serial port based, those have a ton of caps in them that leak. I have one that's like brand new, but I think the caps leaked in it, so I'm going to have to open that up and fix it that uh, they're so sandwiched together too if you ever look one of those up oh it's not does not look like fun um yeah i mean the floppy drive gear could have broken in that so that's interesting yeah i mean it, it could very well be <laughs> it could thanks dana it could very well be just the weird pin out of that cable um so yeah let's uh let's look at something else here so i teased these a few minutes ago and hopefully we have enough uh, dorky people like me who know exactly what these things are. Um, 
These are Farallon phone net adapters. Uh, where can I get a good firewire camera? Believe it or not, Goodwill. Get one of these uh, DV camcorder things. And I'm going off topic here, but it's just because that's what happens. I see the shiny objects in the chat and I get distracted. Get one of these. Get something like this. You'll need the power adapter for it, but... And this has a... Uh, where's the firewire port on this thing? It might be called iLink. A lot of them called iLink on Sony's. This has infrared too. Oh, boy. Um... Why where we're out there? Here it is. Get, get one of these. Get, get something like that. It'll work. It'll work for iChat. If iChat was still a thing. Anyway. Phone net adapters. Um, yeah, Goodwills can be expensive. Look online. There's there's tons of there's tons of firewire cameras. Camcorders or webcams. iBot made some. Obviously the iSight is a good is a good one. But um, Okay, so yeah, these are phone net adapters. Now, the thing is. Uh, at least in the two I have here, I had another, hold on, hold please, here we go, the two I have here will work, they will work, hey Madeline, welcome to the party, I don't know, I don't know what we're doing here, but <laughs> we're doing stuff, alright, so, um, <laughs> oh boy, so these are phone net adapters, and uh, I, I sort of got a silly idea because uh, I have quite a lot of old Macs, and this house actually has some wired RJ11 cable in it. It is Wednesday, and I just got your email, Hot Rod. Sorry for the delay. Um, I said, I, I almost posted a tweet about this, but I'll just tell you guys. Um, I am super swamped with repairs. I have, I have a lot of repairs I'm working on. Um, I have about, I've, I've a number of repairs from, from Brandon that are the top priority because they, they, they came in first. Um, and I have a lot of repairs that are on the way here. There's some stuff I fixed. I have to ship out. There's some stuff I fixed and then I go to test it and something's still wrong with it. So I, I've gotten a lot of new emails about requests and stuff. I'm not ignoring you. I got the message. I'm just not replying to it right now. So just a heads up. So anybody sending me a new message and it's like, oh, you're not, you didn't look at it yet. Nope. I, I have a system in place. I just have to focus on the stuff I'm focusing on now or my brain will explode and nobody wants that. But yes, it is on your pile. Yes, yes, it is on my pile. Um, and I have, uh, I have uh, some stuff that's that will be shipped out soon. So, but you you guys will get an email. Don't worry. Um, nearly all the houses in here in the Netherlands come with RJ11. Very cool. Um, all right. So yeah. So these these will work fine with standard telephone RJ11 cable. Now the problem is, if you leave one of these ports open. Ideally, they should be terminated. If they're not terminated with a little thingy there, what's going to happen is your connection can get corrupted or data could get messed up along the way or the computer gets confused. Because Apple's system, which they designed that entire phone net thing for, well, not phone net, rather. This is the Apple's version of it called Local Talk. It has some masking tape around it. But Apple's version here is uh, a bit different. Use proprietary cables. And these cables look very much like the printer serial cables and stuff, but the end is a little different. And it has a different coupler here. They are, they are spring-locked. So if you see I pull this back. I have to pull it pretty hard to disconnect it. And you can see that is not your standard Apple serial cable. It has three connectors there. Two for data and one for ground, I believe. I'm not an expert on this. And this is a little coupler. I found this at a thrift store when I was visiting uh, a shore town with my family for, for, of all places. You never know when you're going to find this stuff. You never know. That's where I found a PC-compatible DOS card uh, cable. So that was neat. Not the same store, but same town. Um, well, neighboring town. But yeah, so these are proprietary cables. And what they would do is you could... You don't need a Terminator for Apple's ones because they have built-in termination uh, in their cabling system. That's not... That's not one of them, uh, which made them so expensive. And also these cables, and I'm going to do a standalone video about this. So I'm just rambling for no reason. But um, these video, these video cables, these cables uh, were also proprietary and they were also not rated to be installed in walls or offices. You could not, for safety reasons and for fire hazard reasons, could not install these wires in offices. That You just couldn't do it. They weren't rated for that. And of course they were damn expensive too. So that was Apple's solution for local talk networking. And Farallon comes along and says, you know what, we could do the same thing. 
We're only going to use two cables because who needs a ground cable? And since we're using RJ11 cabling, you can install that in the wall because it's already rated for it. And the ingenious thing is, we're only going to use two out of the four available uh, telephone lines. And we're going to use the two that are most commonly not used. So the thing is, that if you have an existing telephone network in your business, you can plug a telephone line in here, and more often than not, you'll be able to use the networking part of the telephone line while the voice part of the telephone line is working, as long as your cabling was set up correctly. And yes, you can mix and match these on the Apple Talk network. You can. Just have to make sure everything is terminated. And I'm going to get to termination in a, in another in another minute minute in more detail. But these are these are very cool. And, it, and a, a thing I keep reading online, and I, and I don't I don't have any proof of this, but I believe it's true. Just because typical Apple. Um, rumor has it that Apple didn't even use their own local talk cabling system within the Apple campus. When things were wired up for a network back in the day, they actually used Farallon's phone net cabling. Makes perfect sense because phone net is rated for in-wall installations. It's cheaper to do. And uh, yeah, so I, I think Apple just accepted the fact eventually. And if you look in laser rider manuals, they will sometimes, uh, some of the earlier manuals will show one of these boxes with the phone net uh, things, and then they will show uh, Apple's proprietary, you know, system. I mean, I guess technically Farallon's is proprietary, but it uses a standard cable. Um, yeah, so in the manual, they, they sometimes switch between them. In the later manuals, they'll show the phone net because they weren't selling the uh, local talk connection anymore. So, yeah. Uh, I fail to see why Apple the Apple cables can't be. They look more shielded. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's totally a thing that was just like a federal regulation in the U.S., I'm sure, of that the cable was not rated for in-wall installation or something like that. Um, yeah. And uh, I, now I don't know the whole story behind that. It's just something I've read. And uh, Madeline says they only sold their own phone net cables to customers. <laughs> yes, probably. Um, yeah, and they they um, have to have a, a Flenum rating? Okay. Uh I've just seen Mike's fixed his glasses. I don't know who's Mike. Who are you referring to? I didn't fix my glasses. They're still broken. My name's Steve. Um, so, <laughs> um, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. This, this, this whole stream should be renamed Steve Loses His Train of Thought. Um, yeah, so what I was going to say is these are pretty useless unless you have a full network without those termination doohickeys. Now, if you look at one of them, You'll notice they're quite simple. All this is is an RJ11 end piece with a little resistor in there and a little plastic thingy so you could fish it out easily. That's all that is. That's all that is. So what I did was I got one of these and I got one of these. And I got one of these. <laughs> I think you guys know where I'm going with this. I can make my own little Terminators now. I can make a hundred of them. <laughs> I don't know why I need a hundred of them. But it was cheaper to just buy a hundred of them than buy 50 of them. So I have the full power here. I have a hundred little uh, 120 ohm resistors here. And uh, I have a uh, hundred of these. And I have this tool. So I got, yes... Just as Justin says, got termination for days. <laughs> Don't worry, Mike. I did not break the bank on this. This was like all of $4. This was all of maybe $5. And this thing, I think, was 6 or $7. Really dirt cheap stuff. Um, RJ11 earrings. <laughs> True Apple hipster. Um, this is, this. hopefully it works out quite well. This actually does three things. It does RJ45, uh, RJ11, uh, and... Uh, what else does it do? Uh, whoops. And uh, RJ12. So that's like the... Um, you can, yes, we make our own phone net cables now too. So it actually feels pretty good quality for the amount of money I paid for that. Yes, that's what I was going to say, Mike. The Mike, the Mac... The, uh, the Mac Plus and Macintosh 128 and 512K uh, keyboard cables... Uh, you need to swap around those cables if you're using a standard telephone cable, otherwise it'll fry your computer. 
I could fix that with this. I need to get different uh, RJ11 connectors. A diff uh, was it RJ... Uh, was it 12? Whatever it is, connectors for that. But, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> and now I need 168K max. I think I got that covered. I think I got that covered. Um, Steve makes Terminators. Are you Skynet now? Yes, this is affirmative. This is my horrible impression. Alright, so <laughs> we're going to try and make a Terminator. So, RJ9. That's what it is. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Uh, I knew it was different. Uh, this thing should say RJ9 on it. It just says 6P, 8P, 4P. I mean, this, this is a cheapo thing. This is not fancy. Is there a way to make a PS2 to ADB adapter? I'm sure there is. I just am not skilled enough to make one myself. I'm sure you could find one. There's there's ADB to USB and then USB to PS2. So you can go the long way around and make it complicated for yourself. Oh, I actually do have... I have an ADB to PS2 adapter. It's like a KVM thing for Mac and PC. I don't think I've ever tested it, but... Yes, RJ9 is the handset connector. Yes, that, that is the uh, the word for that. Thank you, guys. So, yeah, this will do both the RJ11 and the RJ9. So, very useful. I don't have the RJ9 connectors, but I, I suppose I could go and get those for a few bucks. Okay, so let me move the camera here so we can actually see what I'm doing. Um, you know what? Let's, uh, this camera on. Let's, okay. the microscope is overkill for this, but, but... He says but a lot, but we're gonna ah, use what we got. All right, so let's let's do this here. Um, oh, that's right. I unplugged the microscope camera camera because I was fussing with something else. I didn't plug it back in. So nope, no, we can't do that. Can't do that. OBS will have a fit. You can't do that. Uh, what we can do is just use this camera. That's what we we'll just do that. All right, so. Um, all right, what we're going to do is open up this box. Hopefully this actually has the <laughs> the, the, uh, the resistors in there. And somebody online said they were they were 120 ohm resistors. And I sort of took that at face value and it could be it could totally be not. But uh, thank you very much, Mike. Mike from Mike's Mac Shack people. Eep. Oh, that wasn't a good eep. Hold on. That was a little high pitched. Let me let me adjust myself here. Eep. No, no, see, that was too low. Eep! There we go. I think that was a good middle ground. Thank you, Mike, very much for... for <laughs> this stream sucks. You should go to mine instead. You were all terminated. Well, if you're streaming at the same time, I'll just shut down right here, Mike. I got my 10 bucks. But I don't I don't got to do anything now. <laughs> what bands are the Terminator? That's an excellent question, Bruce. <laughs> this came out of the box. I looked in here, I'm like, oh, it's empty. I didn't realize this was already in there. Those eeps are wild, baby. All right. Um, at first glance, it looks like the ohms are different colors. <laughs> Oops. All right. So um, the original one that's I'm honestly I don't think it's really gonna matter much. I, I don't know. Um, this is well. Let's let's uh, use one of these uh, website dealies here because I'm gonna screw it up. Uh, resistor uh, rating code color thing go go internet go uh, continue to website okay cool so the first one is which way does it go I guess it doesn't matter how many how many strips are one two three four all right we have four so the first one is brown brown and the second is red the next is brown and the last is gold making it 120 okay so these are 120 but these are metal film fixed resistor I mean, hopefully that's the same thing but I mean if that's not complaining then I'm not complaining so all right cool yes I have to download one of those apps I'm just lazy and my phone's usually in my pocket during these streams, so it doesn't help me much. All right, so let me uh, attempt to open this bag. That's step one. Yes, they're very new. They're very new. They have uh, five colors. Five colors. Oh, look at these. It's it's. I can make a uh, a little a little head head thing there. I could um, I can make a bracelet. 
I'm glad the stream made your day better. It made my day better too. I do this when I when I want to and it makes me happy. I have a this this I could sell on Etsy right now. This is this is authentic uh retro geek uh cheek wear. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are laughing cuz I'm just making myself look like an idiot. <laughs> I can make a pterodactyl, yeah. That's this is Anyway, we're going <laughs> to use our snips and just free one of them before we destroy all of them by making animals out of them. Uh, we're just going to cut one off here. <laughs> I'd buy it. That, that'll, that's how I afford my new camera. Steve, how did you buy that new camera with all those lenses? I sold these on Etsy. I made a mint. Right. <laughs> let's let's uh, put them back in here so I don't lose them. I'm glad you're cracking up. All right. And uh, so what we're going to do is it looks like this resistor is just plugged into there's four pins on this thing so it's plugged into the one on here and one on here so we're just gonna do the same, same thing <laughs> oh there's so many airplane jokes that I'd like to recite right now I just can't uh. okay <laughs> I just thought of the scene at the end of the movie the guy's still in the taxi <laughs> I'm gonna give him five more minutes and then that's it cracks me up every time. Alright, we're going to take an RJ11 thing here. And uh, we're going to take our resistor here. And this should be as simple as cutting it so we, we don't have as, as long of a thread here. Just putting it in there and crimping it. <laughs> no thanks, I have a drinking problem. <laughs> Oh, just want to tell you, we're all counting on you. Okay, so, um, you know what, let me, let me plug in the microscope camera, because this thing's not going to focus on what I'm doing, and i got to stand up anyway. So, uh... <laughs> oh, I have to watch that movie now. I have to watch that movie. Let me go get this cable. Where is this cable? There it is. For those of you, whoops, hold on, let me, let me steady myself here, there we go, before I trip over things. For those of you who I um, have, have seen some of my ramblings on Twitter, I probably won't show you tonight because it's a bit of a pain to set up. Hold on, let me plug this in, then I'll continue my thought. Ugh. Wait, what else is plugged in? Uh, the, the easy cap. Thing. We don't need you anymore. Ugh. You can never have enough USB plugs, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, you can never have enough USB plugs. That is my sage advice to you all. Yes, just march off into the basement. You'll hear a bunch of laser discs crash on me, and then you just start planning the funeral service. So I tell my wife. All right, so the trackpad has stopped responding. There it goes. Connection lost. Yeah, of course it got lost. It's a big building with a lot of patients and beds, but that's not important right now. <laughs> I love Leslie Nelson. Ah, uh, Jay, you're missing out. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to uh, make sure that... No, we're not opening terminal. That just would be silly. Uh, we're going to make sure my microscope camera is actually being detected. Hey, it's me. I'm on TV. And, yeah, there we go. We just got to turn the light on. Maybe. Come on, don't be a sourpuss. What's going on? Come on. Ah! The operation cannot be completed. Thank you, QuickTime, for the completely, you know, normal, understandable error message. Right, what, what do I got to do here? It's plugged in. We got the thing. What's going on? Who's the... Serves me right for playing around with this thing. Yes, an expedition. Belongs in a museum. All right, so this USB cable, maybe I got to plug this into the back of the Mac. Hold on. Hold on, folks. I had to do this last time because this camera is very fussy, apparently. Ugh. This camera is very fussy. And, of course, this Mac Pro has a lot of crap behind it. There's my network switch and all this stuff. Uh, 
very warm back here. It's probably not a good thing. Is that a USB port or a FireWire port? If my computer shuts off, it, just let me know. See, I'm an idiot. I plug this in. Well, I'll explain later. Let me try and plug this in, then I'll explain. This is not going to go well. This is not going to go well. Why did you do this, Stephen? Why do you have to do this? Oh, this massive, massive hard drive is in my way. I just put that down there. You can look at that for a while instead of looking at my butt. Let's try this again. Ah. All right, let's hope I didn't just disconnect a PCI card while the computer was on. Cause that would not, that would not be good. Sorry, don't want to blind you all. <laughs> Madeline, thank you very much. <laughs> oh God, eep, thank you very much. That is hilarious. Oh man, oh man. I gotta scroll up here. <laughs> Quick time should be called hard time. I'm on a Mac, uh, and you're oh you're watching me on a Mac. I see. Uh, be sure to buy dinner. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, I speak jive. <laughs> Hilarious movie. All right, all right. Let's see. let's see. Okay. The Crocodile Dundee of SCSI enclosures. Yeah, this thing, you call that a SCSI hard drive? It's a SCSI hard drive. Yeah, that's, that's the size of my fist. That is how big that is. All right, we're going to put this down. I wouldn't want to put that in my overhead luggage. All right, so let's, let's see if this wants to work now. Um... So basically, I have a USB 3 card that's in this Mac Pro, but the plate on the back of it is for a low-profile machine. And uh, yeah, so plugging in USB things in there is, is always uh, an adventure because you don't know if it's going to work or not, and now it works. So that's good. All right, so let's go back to our microscope camera here. Let's change the settings so OBS uh, understands that the microscope camera is actually plugged in because it's stupid. It's stupid. Every time you unplug something, it's like, no, it's not there no more. I confused. There we go. Big chungo drive. All right, cool. So you see a twist tie. How about that? And my fingernails. All right, so don't worry. We have more stuff to mess with today. It's only 8:45 or whatever. So all right. So now here's a better example. Uh, let me close QuickTime here, so it's not all laggy. Uh, let me just adjust the screen here so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so here we have, am I zoomed in out all the way? Yeah, I'm zoomed out all the way. So here we have these little uh, terminators. The one over here, right here, is the one that came with the system here. And this is one that we're gonna redo. So all we need is our little resistor thingy here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna just cut it um just just in half almost just uh, enough sorry that that it's very hard to do this because I'm usually looking through the microscope and I'm not right now but uh, I'm just gonna cut that there just so this isn't as long there we go RJ11 earrings you know that that'll be an Etsy thing I'm sure uh, I don't know if I'm skilled enough but uh, no one will want to buy that from me, trust me. All right. Okay, so we have our little 
thingy there, our little resistor, and what we're going to do is we're going to try, at least, to fish this through. So, now be it, I need like little plastic rings like this. If anybody knows where I could get these little plastic rings like this, it would be sweet if they were multicolored. It would be also sweet if I... Ooh, I just had an idea. I'll make Mac 84 keychains with my logo, and then I'll put the resistors on them. <laughs> the terminators on them. <laughs> Fashionable and practical. Hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to put this in there. So we're just going to try and, and feed them in there. Now, there are grooves inside of this, so you got to... Fiddle around with it until it actually will uh, go in there. <laughs> but my ears are not pierced. Oh, well, I have this crimping tool. Let me just... Ah! <laughs> I logged into that Mac 84 guy the other night. It was a weird stream. I tell you what. All right. How am I doing this wrong? Oh. It helps when you, you actually look at what you're doing. Okay. Let's let's look through the microscope. That'll be me. Make it life a little easier for me. Come on. Come on, little one. Push. Push. Let me move the trackpad so I don't like change things. One percent tolerance. See Bruce 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 is like now I have to tell everybody about all of these. Because now I know the magic behind them. And he just makes me look bad because I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. That's very helpful information, actually. Yeah, that's what the, the thing on Amazon said. So I'm like, you know what? For five bucks, even if it's the wrong one. Hey, look, I got it in there. All right, so you can see, hopefully, maybe... Oh, did it, fall? it fell out. Ugh, no! <laughs> it shouldn't be as hard as it is, honestly. It should not be that hard. <laughs> It's just the the wire is so thin and it's it just has to be aligned to, to fit in there. <laughs> Watch a man struggle for eight hours. Non stop action. Oh, I got one in there. Really? Oh, does the tolerance matter? <laughs> I hope it doesn't matter, Bruce. <laughs> because I'm not buying another set. Uh, where's my... Here, let's use with these little things. Lower is better. Yay! I did something right by accident for a change. Alright. Oh, yes. I know all is about capacitors. Alright, we're gonna use... I don't know, I don't know why this would help. Alright, so just to... Okay. This is, this is gonna take an hour, guys. Just so you know. Just so you know. Alright. So the goal is to get one pin in one side, one pin on the other side. The problem is, unless this is like bent, so those actually go into the same spot, they're just gonna, they're just gonna fling around there, and I don't want that to happen. So let's try this again. All right, they're in, they're in the left side and the right side. You could kind of, why is this still moving then? Ugh. See, it's much easier when you have a cable. And the cable is, is thick, so you don't have to worry about the, the things falling in. Alright, so I'm, I'm gonna just... I'm gonna put this in the crimper. <laughs> and then when I have it, I'm just gonna crimp it. Because that's the only way this is gonna get done here. get the comment from that guy who doesn't like me enjoying myself and be like you laugh too much on your live stream I can laugh because I like laughing all right almost there this is actually an easier way to do it you can see the problem I'm having because <laughs> it just flew out of there I'm making a resistor a terminator rather out of a resistor for a phone net adapter all right let's see if that works crimp Maybe. Nope. Ah, <laughs> oh, crap. Well, 
It crimped it all right. But I wasn't holding it in, so it just flew out of there. Next! Welcome back to How Not to Crimp Cables with Mac84. I am your host, Steve. How dare people enjoy themselves? Live, laugh, eat! Alright, so let's get this in there again. I really shouldn't need a microscope to do this, but I'm just horrible, I guess. Okay. Nope. <sighs> it's fun because it's frustrating me and um, I try and make this show family friendly and this is pushing my patience. Alright, so yeah, the problem is this, this cabling is just so thin that if I put any pressure on it, it's going to bow and bend and it's not going to sit in that connector the way I want it to. So what I'm going to have to do is just be very gentle about that. Oh, I know I'm not horrible. I just, you know, self-deprecating humor is just funny to me. Um, so <laughs> we're going to try and put this in, like, I think... I think that's it, right? Well, no. It does, doesn't it? See, I thought, you know, I'll get these. It'll be fun. I'll do a stream on them. Everyone will be laughing. All right, let's hold. See, one, two, three, four. Yeah. All right, well, we could try. It's still, it's still like they're. Yeah, let me bend it the other way then. Let's see. Just because it, it, they have to sort of be bent outwards, you know what I mean? Like, because, because they're, you know what I mean? Because they, once, once they get in there, they kind of want to go close to each other, and that's gonna, it's gonna, it's, it's trying to, it's trying to pizza when it, I need to French fry. So let me. Sure, we'll go with that. Does that work? Ah, darn it! How the heck did that happen? I got I got both in the same one. How did how did that happen? Now I'm just getting frustrated. <laughs> I, I I I am tempted to just fill this thing with hot glue. But like, they're done. We're done. We got it. How many of these stupid plastic things are going to rip through? Oh, boy. Yes, I saw your email. And uh, I will get to that machine. It's going to be an exciting one. Oh, boy. See, the, the, the thickness of the cabling here... Well, not the cabling, but the metal bit. See? On the original, is much thicker. So... That must help. Let me try one more. I know, I see, I know you can mail me one. But I bought these things so I can make them. And my failure rate at, at this point is sensational. Hey, watch this dumb guy. He can't get it to work. Let's, let's try this again. <laughs> I could wire up some things, but this is just... See, look. Uh, is this what I mean? So, I'm not even bending this one. I'm just showing you. There's so much wiggle room in here that it could easily move from one spot to the other. I think, I think that's a problem because while you're putting pressure on this, it's going to move. 
And so maybe I just need to get new resistors or um, I should get telephone cable, put it in there, crimp it, and then solder it to that cable. Whatever. It's, uh... Oh, I'm sorry. I missed the bread that hot rod. Ooh, exciting. Hopefully you don't have to send the 476 to me. If you do, don't worry. But hopefully you don't have to. Yeah, I think... I, I think, um... Yeah, I think that, uh... We will have to figure out a different solution for this, but... Because if I crimp this, I'm, I'm just going to go through these like crazy, and it's it's not going to be fun. Because if I crimp this, I'm going to try one more. Just one more. If I crimp this, I have, I have a very strong feeling that it's just going to push the wire over to the other side. And it's just it's just going to just get stuck in there. Like, we don't want that to happen. Let's just try this one more time. I'm using the extra long bits here. I didn't cut it or anything. See? <laughs> oh. All right, so I'm going to hold this and I'm going to see even with them I'm holding it. It's going to well, Let's uh, let's see. Let, let's let's adjust the uh, this here so you guys can see what's happening too. Maybe uh, I mean, whatever. We're gonna we're gonna try it. Hey, it worked. It's loose. It's definitely loose in there. Yeah, th these resistors, the, the the gauge of that wire is not thick enough for that to uh, catch on it. Cause this this is very loose there. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and crimp it again. But yeah, that there's no way that that is stable. That is, you can see how wiggly that is. Well, you can't because I have to focus. But there you go. But you can see that. So this is a perfect example of me saying, "Oh, that's so easy." I could just put a bunch of these together, not to sell them or anything, but just for me to use them. And, uh, yeah. What a bunch of crap. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's not how to do one of these. Uh, obviously, all I need is some foam cable and some solder. Uh, and I, uh, there, there would be more thickness in there. Uh, I'd be able to make one of these a little bit easier. Um... Not a deal breaker. I could still use all the parts I got. I could still. I just need to get a spool of telephone cable, which is actually hard to get. It's actually, to get like a spool of flat telephone cable, it's like forty dollars. I mean, yeah, it's like three hundred feet, but like I have to order it from like the UK. So I, I can't find a, anything locally that's that's anything good. So. Oh boy. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't need too many of them because, because um, it's just expensive. Yes, and so it's it's you know I don't I don't need to make a hundred of them. But I figured if I made a bunch, you know, you know, yeah, I could I could put some solder on the end of it, but um, yeah, I'm not gonna do that today. But that was a fun experiment. Thank you for joining me in my insanity as as we went along and looked at that. Because now, if any of you think, oh, I'll just do exactly what he did, now you know not to do it. Uh, the flea market bag is over there. But I don't want to. I don't want to eat into a phone cable and just cut it because I might end up wanting to use that. But um, <laughs> I'm glad somebody thought that was fun. Um, but um, I, I will get a spool of phone cable, and uh, we'll try it again. Uh, that's why that's why you get extras, folks. That's why you get extras. Oops, I pull everything off of, else off the table here. Um, oh, let me show you guys something neat. Now I already showed Mike this. It's not Mac related, but it's computer related. 
so when I picked up the, um, <laughs> you ever see a grown man naked? Um, when, when I went to go get the G3 all in one, uh, there was a bunch of non Mac stuff, obviously. And oh, did I just screw this up? Uh, there's a bunch of non-Mac stuff, obviously, and there was this. This is, if I can move the tripod without hitting the chair, there we go, for a professional stream here. <laughs> this is a ThinkPad. So this was made uh, by Lenovo. It's not an IBM one. This is a Lenovo one. The uh, Microsoft, cert Microsoft Certificate of Authenticity is completely stripped off of the bottom of this thing. Um, but... It is a ThinkPad. It's not PC84. Don't worry. Just don't tell Jay. And so... He heard his name now. He's going to come. Um, so this is... It, it's, it's, it's a... Well, I'll, I'll tell you the specs of it in a second. But what I liked about this machine is all the ports that it has on it. So it's got Firewire. It's got USB. It's got the Kens Kensington lock port. It's got a, a, a combo drive that Apple would have called it. Has a headset jack. Not just headphone. Has headset has an eSATA port, has uh, a express card three-fourths slot, same as the 15-inch uh, Mac MacBook Pros used to have, VGA, three USB ports on this side, a display port connector which has a little broken thing in it, might be able to fix it but not a big deal if I can't, Ethernet, and where's the, uh, where's the, we got dial-up modem, yay! So this is close. You're you are close, guys, but you're way off. This is an IBM T410. So T410, and it works. <laughs> Not even a cracked screen or anything. Um, the only trouble I ran into was let's change that background here. We gotta change that background. Gotta change that background, guys. Uh, the only issue I ran into is this. <laughs> it actually came up right as I was talking about it. Uh, I think the hard drive needs to be replaced. <laughs> yeah. I think the hard drive needs to be replaced. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. But, um, yeah, this, this was probably the reason why it was tossed. Started getting these errors or whatever. Um, now it does boot up. It had Windows 7 on it. Somebody already had their user account set up and all this stuff. It's not plugged in. I thought you it plugged you in. Hold on. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Ow. There we go. All right. Sorry about that. All right. So, um, yeah. So anyway, it had it had. Um, this was at the the, the dump site where the, the G3 all-in-one was sitting. I got this, and I got another IBM, but that is a cracked screen, and I don't have the power cord for that. Um, but this one this one was just sitting in the e-waste place uh, in the dump at, on the side of the road. It was just sitting there. Um, I had my own power cord for it because I have a, an X201 and it takes the same power jack uh, thingy, connector, or whatever. I just noticed it has a webcam in there. But uh, this thing, let's look at the specs of this. Not too shabby for a free computer, must admit, even if the hard drive is failing. Uh, what, what was that? Sorry, we were going we to get a desktop background here. Alright, so this is a uh, running Windows 7 Professional. Uh, it's an Intel Core i5 M540 running at 2.53 gigahertz. 4 gigabytes of installed memory. And there you go. Sure, Trina, I will... I, you know, I think I actually have one. I just don't have no idea where it is. But, um... Well, thank you, Adam. That is that is a very kind offer. I might actually take you up on that. If you want to email me, Adam or Trina, at uh, mac84tv at gmail.com. mac84tv at gmail.com. Uh, we'll get in touch. And, yeah, it's it's not, not a bad spec machine. And the whole reason I pulled this out is because I was working on repairing those floppy drives for you, Jordan, if Jordan's still here, and I needed to to make a disk with this USB floppy drive, and, you know, the PC is the best way to do that, making a PC disk. So, 
uh, plugged it in, made a disc, and then I closed the lid and put it back under my desk. Um, but, you know, I was... I, I, I still will do it, because uh, as Mike mentioned in one of his recent videos... Hey, Leo! How's it going? Uh, as Mike mentioned in one of his recent videos, if you have a, a, an actual hardware um, floppy drive, it could write a lot more things than, uh, than a standard USB one can. And... Uh, so Mike actually did a video, and I, I strongly suggest anybody who's into PC stuff, go check out this video. It was actually very, very, very informative. Um, yes, Alex, I, I will not do that. We'll be here for eight hours. <laughs> um, but Mike did a video about bridge computers. So, like, a computer that's not too new, but not too old, that can act as a bridge between a modern computer and... And a retro computer, whether you're trying to transfer files, you're trying to make a network connection, you're trying to do a serial connection, you're trying to copy floppies or something like that. Mike did a great video. Now, his channel is Mike's Mac Shack. Mike, if you want to put a link to that specific video in the chat, you're welcome to do so. Um, because that is very informative for PCs. He's going to do one on, on Macs also. But I know quite a few of you guys here don't discriminate. You like PCs just as much as you like Macs or vice versa. Um, so, yeah, you can do that. Now, let me change the desktop background here. I do have a Mac 84 desktop background. Uh, where did I put my keyboard? <laughs> there it is. Ah. Yeah, the internal floppy is better. I do have... Um, some of you will, will have witnessed the insanity was the, from that stream where I tried to get the SCSI card to work on that old PC and basically nothing wanted to work right. Well, that old PC... Uh, thank you very much, Trina. Uh, that old PC has a spare floppy bay, and I found a floppy drive that'll fit right in it. So, um, I will, uh, be probably setting up that desktop on a semi-permanent basement. A, a basement, yeah. Is it back? Are we back? Are we back? I hope we're back. Let me know when we're back. Okay, so here's a pro tip for everybody. Um, don't leave the trackpad hovering over the stop streaming button. <laughs> don't leave the trackpad hovering over the stop streaming button. Because you will click it, and you will stop the stream. So that's a pro tip for everybody. I'm going to move the trackpad. You know, I'm going to move this on this screen, because I don't want to accidentally hit it. Yeah, that's... It's, it's it's me, which you're going to do. I'm just stupid in that way. All right, so, yep, I'm a dork. All right, so let's get... <laughs> I don't know what I was ranting about. It, it, it's Mac 84 Law. I like that. I like that. That's going on a shirt. Um, so, I used to have a PC sitting right over here. It was a Dell Optiplex PC, and it was fine. <laughs> you want your money back. No refunds. Um, and so, that basement PC was sitting over here for a while, um, and I, that, I actually tried to stream from that. That was my first... PC. I used to, well, not my first PC, but that, that's, oh my gosh, I'm having a flashback here. That, that Optiplex was my first streaming PC. I used to stream on YouTube with that thing with just a, a crummier webcam than this. And, oh man. Yeah, that, I mean, it's still here. I, it's, I didn't throw it out or anything. But that's, that's what... <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what uh, that's what I used to stream on. It was a Dell Optiplex, and it did an okay job. Um, but I switched to the Mac because the stupid thing kept shutting off when it didn't want to. But yeah, so this PC works. I'm not going to use it right now. I'm going to shut it down so the battery can recharge. The Wi-Fi works and everything. Uh, hard drive needs to be replaced. So I'll, I'll either get uh, a hard drive from Adam, or I will uh, go ahead and get an SSD or something like that. Uh, this is a Lenovo T410, if you don't remember. Oh, I'm sorry. What series? Um, <laughs> waiting for the background programs to close. There's nothing open. There is nothing open, and it's waiting for them to close because this hard drive is probably garbage. Uh, it was a Dell Optiplex 910 or something like that. Not a bad machine. I got it for 20 bucks, <clears throat> and it, it served its purpose pretty well. Uh, no, Adam, I think you'll just have to explain to them what the heck it is, and those are pretty sharp, so maybe it's a, maybe it's not a good idea to do that. But, yeah, those, this guy was selling those machines for, like, 20 bucks, and I have a very complicated Rube Goldberg-type setup for digitizing 8mm film, and you might be able to see it. 
if I move this camera over, if I adjust that, uh, so there's there's your comments, and right behind that, there's this projector sitting right there, right there. And you can see that projector right there. Uh, I have a very modified uh, Umig 610 projector. That, oops. This thing is still shutting down. Um, that I used to digitize 8mm film and project it onto a digital camera and so on and so forth. Very convoluted setup. It works. The results are pretty nice. But um, it requires a PC to look at the footage that I shot and determine what frames look good and what frames could be tossed out and all this stuff. Um, and so that whole process is done via a command line application that somebody... Uh, we're getting to the max. This thing has to shut down first. Uh, <laughs> the, this whole command line thing has to be run on Windows. And um, basically, I project the film at 6 frames per second onto the camera sensor of my camera. Not even the lens, the camera sensor. So you get raw, raw quality like that. And then um, you record that at 60 frames per second. So you're recording... What the cat, what the projector is shooting out at 60 frames per second, but the projector is running at nine frames a second rather. And then this software takes a look at that and looks at all the frames that are blurry from the projector pulling down that film. And then what it does is get rid, gets rid of the rest. And it does a pretty good job. It does a pretty good job. I would love if my basement is clean. As Mike knows, that's probably not going to happen. And this thing is still shutting down. So anyway. Um, that command line program strips all that out. Then I could use, uh, was a virtual dub or whatever that is to make it a movie file. And then I could use it in Final Cut Pro, but it's a whole process to get through it. I've had pretty darn sharp results with that. Uh, and I'm limited to 720p, but if I get a new camera that does, one of them I'm looking at does 4k at 60 FPS. Now 4k is overkill for it, but 1080p would be fine. I'm actually looking for like a 2k thing because um, it's a four by three aspect type ratio, not exactly, but it's a square image. And if you're recording it on a, uh, a widescreen thing, you have to sort of have padding on the right and left. So yeah, this thing is screwed anyway. We're just going to turn this off. Bad computer, bad, very bad. You broke the stream. All right. So that's going to sit over here right next to the trash bin where it belongs. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh yes. <laughs> From the anime days. Anime days are always with us, man. Alright, so yeah. Hello, Christina. Welcome to the stream. Uh, who else came by that I didn't say hello to? Anybody who I didn't who I didn't catch and say hello to? My apologies. Hello. Okay, so we attempted and failed. Well we didn't we, we kind of succeeded in making a uh, terminator there. Um you stay there. What else could we do? What else could we do? Oh, see you later, Dylan. Sorry I didn't say uh, hello to you. You gladly take my trash. Well, when it comes to that, uh, I will be happy to send it to you. <laughs> what else are we going to look at today? Um, oh, yeah, I can talk about this. Uh. Oh, boy. So, uh, I recently picked up some memory on eBay. The E of Bay, as it's called. A PS2 Model 30. Mike, wake up. He's talking about a PS2. I have a PS2 Model 50Z. Very nice little machine. I've never seen a Model 30, but... Uh, yeah, so this is a Macintosh 2CI. And the label on here says, It boots no nubus. And that's from 2019 I wrote that on there. So, the reason this computer is on the bench right now is... Uh, what I'm holding in my hand. Um... Oh, yes, I have those Apple IIc power adapters, too. They're very nice. So, memory for these old computers is getting a little bit difficult to find. Especially when you have these crazy people on eBay charging stupid prices. Now, this memory is not going to work in all the vintage Macs. But, for $20, somebody was selling a pack of four of these. So, just for visual illustration here. One, two, three... Somebody was selling four, four megabyte modules. So that's 16 megabytes of memory total for $20. Free shipping. 
$20 free shipping for 16 megabytes of memory. Not bad. Now, this is non-parity memory. Not all Macs will be happy with non-parity memory. Not all Macintosh 2CIs will be happy with non-parity memory. But Bruce here in the chat from Brankus Creations, who has an excellent YouTube channel, go and subscribe to him. I'm sure you're already subscribed to him. Um, there we go. And uh, he told me a little trick here. So the Macintosh 2CI has two versions, and one of them has a chip on it. that uh, is a parity chip, and this does not have that chip. So non-parity memory is a-okay. So right there is where that chip will go, and obviously there's an open spot there. Uh, I am backed up on Adrian's episodes. I have not watched that, but... Um, yeah, there's there's specific memory for different models. Um, yes, you could get a capacitor list for a Macintosh 2CX on Bruce's website. And I will plug that in a moment. Let me screw the camera back on here. There we go. And uh, so the difference between parity memory and non-parity memory is beyond my pay grade. Uh, essentially, some Macs are compatible with it and some don't care about it. So depending on your Mac, you might be able to get away with cheaper, more common memory. And that was the whole point I was going to make. So let me pull up, if I, if I do my fancy uh, YouTube... Uh, Streaming nonsense here. One has birds, one doesn't. Um, yeah, so basically, there's an extra chip in there, and it regulates stuff and all this nonsense and whatever. Um, let's uh, do this here. Let's go to... Uh, where's the thingy? Where did the thingy go? Oh, there it is. Uh, window capture. We're going to go to... Uh, where'd it go? There we go. All right. All right. So this is Bruce Rain's website, Brankus Creations. Error checking. Yes. There. That, that. Thank you, Emily, as always, for saving my butt there. Uh, so this is Bruce's website. Recap a Mac. Brankus Creations. Awesome website. www.recapamac.com or you can go to recapamac.com.au, whatever you prefer. Essentially, if you go to the resources section here. You scroll down, there's a lovely list of Macintoshes, and you got a Macintosh 2CX here. And if you click on that, you get a lovely little description, and you get, this one actually has links to those exact capacitors. So you just click on those, and what you're able to do is just order those. And there's a little, nice little diagram here. This is one of Bruce's recent diagrams here. He color-coded it and stuff. Got some, some good, good colors in there. And you can even download a PDF of it. And I actually have some of these printed out in a little binder. And smash that like button. And what you can do is basically recap this computer pretty easily. Now, there's a very important note here. And this note was added when Bruce and I were tinkering around with these machines recently. And the original version of the guide has the polarity wrong of some of these caps. And the screen printing on the logic board is actually incorrect. So you just have to be very careful when replacing the capacitors right here in this area. Uh, and if that's not being clear, let me try and zoom that in. There we go. Uh, right here, these little 10 UF 16 volt ones, I believe that's what we're talking about. Here? Uh, yes. Uh, the 10 microfarad 16 volt capacitors here are the ones you just got to double check on because you can actually almost see here the screen printing says that the positive is on this side, and that is incorrect. Thank you very much, Bruce. Eep! No, I keep screwing up the eeps here. Let me let me get a good eep there. Eep! There we go. That's a good eep. Um, yeah, so the non-parity sims will work on some machines, like a Quadra 700 or the, the non-parity versions of Macintosh uh, 2CI. Now, actually, let's go to Bruce's 2CI guide here. And uh, Bruce is awesome. I love Bruce. He's an awesome individual, awesome streamer. If you're not subscribed to him, I don't know what you're doing. you got to subscribe to him. But yeah, this one also is missing the uh, parity chip here. So, I don't know how many had that chip on there, to be honest. And probably a revision thing, but... Uh, anyway, yeah. So that's Bruce's website, recapamac.com. Uh, I need to learn... I, I don't know all the all the sounds. I know, how to, I know how it goes, but I can't replicate it with my mouth. I'm not... <laughs> I 
<laughs> that sounds wrong. I am not that skilled. Um, but yeah, so excellent resource there, Leo. If you have to recap your Macintosh, I have to make one of those lower third banners for your, your website, Bruce. I have one for Mike, I think, which I forgot to put up when I was tagging his thing or whatever the heck. So Mike, there's your there's your thing there. And uh, oh gosh, I have to pronounce this name now. T S T A H L F S U. Thank you very much for the super sticker. I cannot pronounce the name. Please tell me your name in the comments, and I will, I will, I will thank you properly. Um, it, that name almost sounds like Susumi, but um, Bruce has never seen one with the parody chip. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, it isn't Susumi? It's an orange. Okay. Uh, Tim. Okay, Tim. Tim. Thank you very much, Tim. You, you get an eBay as well. Eep. Thank you very much for the super sticker and the super chats, Bruce and Mike. Thank you very, very much. Greatly appreciated. All going towards that new camera fund, I assure you. And what's nice is if I get the camera that I'm looking forward to, um, I could use it as a webcam too. So no more of this Logitech thing. Oh my gosh, Leo. Thank you very much. Thank you. Eep. Thank you very much for the, the super sticker there. We started an avalanche of things. Excellent. <laughs> that is very much appreciated. And uh, I'm glad that uh, you found Bruce's website useful. He has an excellent website. I would be lost with uh, without my my resources from Bruce's website. He does excellent work there. Uh, let's see. Um, yes, ebio 5 says he used Bruce's site to re to recap some Macintosh 2C, uh, 2SI power supplies. Um, parity memory on a SIM can be disabled by cutting the trace. Good to know. Uh, a 2CX or a 2CI with parity would have been very rare option, likely only for government systems running AUX. Emily, as always, with the very awesome knowledge. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So, um, a recapping guide for a Sony CR44 power supply for a Mac SE. There is uh, some power supplies on there, let's, let's say. Now, a lot of Bruce's stuff will be uh, the Australian version or the, the uh, non-US version of these power supplies. Um... And that is, that is just, you know, how the, the machines he's got, that's what he has. I don't see one on there, but I'm sure between Bruce and I, we probably have one, and we can get one to you eventually. So, uh, Elisa 2 that needs some power supply love. Oh, boy. I, I wouldn't know where to, where to begin on that. The Droplet or Chew Toy? Chew Toy is a good one. Log Jam was an interesting one. All right, so um, I actually did a video about, uh, about the sounds. But uh, you probably saw that. It was probably one. Of, it's actually one of my best watched videos recently, which is silly. But I think it's just because it was big server related. Anyway, let's boot this sucker up. Why the, what the heck am I yabbing on about? Yabba never do. All right, so uh, let's see how this thing boots with 32 megabytes. So we're going to plug this thingy in here. Just put all this memory back in here. Yes, Console 5 does have recapping kits. However... If you have more than a handful of Macs, or more than one or two Macs, and you're up for the challenge of researching and, and doing your own work, it may be beneficial for you to order these in bulk. Maybe. I'm saying maybe, because. I'll tell you why. When I ordered the Console 5 recapping kit for my Atari 800, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna not buy it from them. I'm gonna make my own recapping kit. And it was like three times the price, because every capacitor was more expensive. They probably bought them in a stock of a few hundreds and, um, or thousands or whatever and made their kits, kits pretty cheap. So, uh, I'll buy another one for them when I have to do the other Atari I have. But, um, okay, awesome. He does have a guide in the process. Awesome. All right, so here is my Macintosh 2 CI. This is one of them. I know the lighting is terrible here. My apologies. Uh, this is one of them. It does have, uh, some green bits on the board that, there's sort of like moss growing. <laughs> it's not a good sign. Uh, but this one works. And leave it, you know, the, the one that I've been fussing with, uh, that that I got working on that live stream, now it doesn't want to work when it went through the ultrasonic cleaner. So that ultrasonic cleaner is a gift and a curse. I'm going to have to recheck that under the microscope, and I just have not had the time to do that. I've been swamped with all other projects here. But uh, we're going to boot this thing up. We're going to plug in our SCSI 2SD adapter here. Just hang that off the side there. Yeah, green bits, moss, whatever you want to call it. Not good. Um, and I have the cash card for this somewhere. Ooh, where is the cash card? 
That would make this really zippy. Oh, where the heck did I put that? Is it in here? Hold on. Let me check the drawer that's under this desk here. Oh no, we're not putting that time bomb in there. No, thank you. Uh, let's see. Some random tablet, New Vision Intel. Some thingy. Uh, the, the amount of weird crap that's in my drawers. I do have a cash card somewhere. Let me just stand up and go across the room just see if it's over there. I would, I would like to use it with the cash card if I can. Uh, delete the original battery. Yeah, yeah there's there's different ways to uh, to add batteries in there. <laughs> yes, the green bits are making a connection. Don't disturb them. I think I got a link for the repair request. Do you do vintage VHS cameras? I have a con couple of sharp that need new caps. Um, see, th the problem is, Apache Thunder, I could very well do the work. Um, I have no experience with those particular models. Feel free to send me an email. I, I can't guarantee I could do it, and I don't even know what I would charge for that because the, the caps will be research that I have to find. Um, and all, all, all that is, is sort of up in the air. And also, I'm just slammed with the repair work right now, so I'm sort of putting like a pause on that. So I might not get to it for a while, but feel free to send me a request. We could talk offline about that. Um, I would love to help you out. But uh, we'll see. Uh, I, I am not the best with bigger, bulkier electronics. And, and the shipping just may not make it worth it to you. But um, <laughs> how much money is on the cash card? Not enough. Let's just say that. Okay, yeah. No, yeah. Send me an email, Apache Thunder, or, or use that form and I'll reach out to you. Don't worry. <laughs> no, this is mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's mine adam oh boy all right so uh yeah let me go find that cash card i'm gonna put on the hold music here for a minute so you guys groove to that just for a couple of moments here i'm going to try and uh find that cash card here so we can boot this thing up
Oh boy. No, the the bunny is the bunny's gonna stay up there for a while. <laughs> He's not moving anywhere. Oh boy, I, I don't know where I put it. It's it, the thing is I put all of my Nubus cards in a bin, and of course I misplaced that bin or it's covered with a computer. So not gonna find it right now. Sorry about that. But um, we'll still boot it up. I did find something else while I, I went over to the other side of the basement. We were looking at my iPod, which was my first MP3 player. Well, it was probably my first iPod. This was one of my first MP3 players here. And yes, I put a huge green Apple sticker on the front of it. Who could guess? Who could guess what monstrosity this thing is? Which I am I am both proud and disappointed and ashamed to mention that I own two more of their products. Not creative, no. <laughs> That's an actual brand, Kate. <laughs> this is... No, not an iRiver. No, no, no. Think a much cheaper and more horrible. Kobe would be sort of on the right track there. <laughs> this was by a company um, called Jam, I think, or whatever the heck they were. This was... They, they had a few products. One was a Jam Cam, which is a digital camera, which I still have. And this was like the Jam It or Jam P3. What does it say on the back of this thing? Jam P3, yeah. By KB Gear Interactive. That was the name of the company. KB, K as in kilobyte, B as in byte, Gear Interactive. And it was like just some, you know, teens, kids, whatever the heck things. So this was their, their MP3 device. Look at the huge USB-B port on the back of it. Look at that. I, I don't know if they were related to KB Toys. Wouldn't surprise me. Ran on two AA batteries. Of course, the battery cover is missing here. Uh, oh, Vivicam. Oh, boy. Um, and, yeah, huge B port there. There's, there's a slot there. And if you think that's an SD card slot, well, then you're simply not old enough to remember multimedia cards. That's right. This does not accept, does not accept SD cards. It accepts multimedia cards, MMC. And yeah, so I think I had a 32 megabyte, megabyte uh, card in here at one point. And yes, the display only, I was just about to say that, Leo. The display only displays numbers like track one out of three. Nothing else, nothing else. Uh, so yeah, this thing probably still works. Has a mode button, a tone button, next track, last track, play and stop, and pause. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Uh, yeah. I remember listening to this thing, so that's, that's, that's not going anywhere. Anyway, let's, let's get on with the show here. I, mean, I guess we're doing a show. Uh, VGA cable is... Where'd you go? Ah! There we go. Hey, still has the adapter on the back of it. How about that? You know, I had a, uh, I have a, a crucial 128 megabyte MMC card and it stopped working. And I think it's because I plugged it into like an SD card slot and it overheated it or whatever because it smelled a little funky. Probably burned something out. And I emailed Crucial and they're like, yeah, sure, we'll replace it. I just got to get back to them. That was, well, that was only about 11 years ago. So I gotta, I, I gotta, I gotta get on that if I ever want that actually replaced. It does have a lifetime warranty. <laughs> oh Lord! All right, so we got we got the uh, video connection in there. Uh, we're gonna need an ADB cable, which I have somewhere. Where the heck did it go? Ah! The amount of cables on my desk, but not the right ones. Not the right ones. Yes, one fourth of the way. Hopefully not. There's one more thing I want to do, and it's probably going to be silly, but such is life. All right, here's the power cable. Where's the oh, right here? Right, here. you guys should have told me it was right here. <laughs> it's all your fault. All right, so we're gonna plug in a. Uh, mouse and a keyboard into this thing 16 megabyte card like for lower res videos <laughs> oh boy that's good that at least has a decent uh a decent thing there for for video all right 
click, click. We got a mouse. Move this floppy drive out of the way so we actually have a spot for our mouse here. And plug this in. And if we do this correctly, I should be able to share and stream this uh, scream, uh, sc stream the scream to you. This is not Halloween anymore, Stephen. Uh, we're going to show you what is being displayed. So let me uh, just set that up in OBS. So uh, the microphone and everything and the camera is all set up. Okay. And yeah, we're going to plug this Mac in. And hopefully it'll chime because it did the other day. Yay! And it might take a while for the screen to show up here. Maybe, if it decides to. It did the other day. Unless this uh, monitor is set on the wrong setting, which is totally possible. Yep, there we go. Okay. But why is it not showing on... Ugh, don't tell me that's not plugged in. Sorry, guys. Hold on. It's showing on the capture thing, but not on this. Oh, of course. It's not... Why is that not plugged in? Ugh. I don't think I've ever unplugged that. So why is that not plugged in? And the light's on. What the heck, OBS? What the heck, man? I am very sorry. Nobody wants that show. Uh, USB 3.0. Yeah, something, something, something is screwed with OBS today. Very sorry. <laughs> I did not mean to moon any of you. This is really a, a throwback to the old streaming days where I would moon everybody on a constant basis. Um... What the heck? Yeah, this is just not showing. Uh, I'm glad you missed it. This is just not showing. Uh, and it totally should because the light's on. It's, it's detecting the device here. Let me um, let me just try and center this maybe. No, that's not working. Um, it's booted here. That does you a lot of good. Um... That's going to there. That output is going to here. Make sure this is actually plugged in. Yep, that should be how it works. Oh, boy. What the heck? First, the... Uh, it's probably one of those things where I just have to unplug the, the video cable, the uh, USB cable. Uh, I'm like Porky Pig here. Unplug the USB cable and plug it back in because wrong one. All right, let's try that again. Oh boy. Yeah, I don't know why it doesn't want to work. Awesome. You piece of crap. See, all the presets here are like not... They're not... They're not working today. Like, it's not detecting the resolution correctly. So, I don't know what's going on. So, I apologize. Um, I will show you guys just with the camera, I guess. Cause that's the only way I can do it right now. I don't know why it's uh, being such a pain in the butt. So... Oh well, but uh, yeah, we have. Did the camera just disconnect? Really? Did the did the camera just disconnect? Wait, what's going on? What's going on? Uh, okay. Wow. Yeah, this. I don't know what's going on today, guys. This is just insane. Anyway, anyway, we're back. We have our little Macintosh here. Running system 753 with a whole 32 megabytes of memory. I look at all those kitties. Oh no, the Goodwill's closing. That stinks. Uh, 
Yes, and oh yeah, there's a Sega Master System there, and a little plug-and-play thing, which I left the batteries on on this, and it ate the batteries, of course, because I'm an idiot. Um, these two things are going to be featured in a video I'm releasing, I think, Friday, so you'll see why. You'll see why. But yeah, this Mac works, and this is really frustrating because it was working... It was working the other day. I'm very tempted to just quit OBS and open it up again and see if that wants to work, but I don't want to leave you guys hanging for a moment, unless you don't mind. I really... Just like, why? Why you don't want to work? Oh, boy. Yeah, this, this capture thing likes to work sometimes, and other times it doesn't like to work. So, yeah. Let me just try editing that source, adding it back again, maybe. <laughs> well, you could just support me on Patreon and then lose your login, and then, then you can't watch the videos ahead of time, so you're not spoiled. <laughs> That's one way to do it. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, you guys, how about this? I'm going to give you guys a task to keep you guys busy in the chat. I want to know what the worst Macintosh is that you ever purchased. What's the worst Macintosh that you've owned or purchased? Absolute worst. I want to hear the, the road apples, the horrible ones. I'm going to quit OBS and I'll be back in like two minutes. Maybe three. Maybe that'll fix the problem. So it's going to do the swirly thing. It's going to act like the stream has ended. It is not. Just hang tight. Sit tight in the chat. Tell me what's the most horrible... Road Apple, crummiest Macintosh you've ever purchased. And uh, we will be back in a moment if I could figure this thing out. So think about that for a moment. But um, 2017 MacBook Pro, shots fired. All right, let me quit OBS here and we'll be back. See if this garbage has figured... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before I do that, let me try one last thing. One last thing here. Wait, if I if I click on this correctly, uh, yeah, it's not working. Not working. All right, I'll be right back. Uh, iBook G3 was a pain in the butt to open. Yep. All right. I okay. Hopefully, you guys could see me again, and it didn't knock out entirely. Let me know in the chat if you could hear me again. Sorry for the uh, interruption. All right, good. It's working now. Oh, boy. I just opened up a can of worms saying what worst Mac you guys bought, didn't I? <laughs> That's kind of the intention. But, oh, boy. Uh, MacBook Pro with the 2017 inch with the touch bar. Uh, worst Macintosh was an amplifier. <laughs> it wouldn't run Dark Castle. <laughs> uh, oh, SE30 leaked. Ugh. G3 was a pain in the butt to open. Mac Mini, the worst thermal design. I guess so. Uh, the, yeah, the new ones that you can't run 32-bit apps on. Not fun. Uh, PowerBook Titanium G4. Bad hinges. Video cables. Oh, yeah. Um, 21-inch Intel iMac. I guess. The Core Dual ones are pretty fast in their day, though. The, the first ones. Performa 616, 6116 CD back in 1995. Family computer. Highly underpowered for the time. Yes. My aunt had one. It was either the 616 or the 615. I have it. I have the box, too. Um, slow machine. Very... Or the first power... P one of the first power PCs. Um, I'm back. I'm back. Refresh... Refresh the... Well... Refresh the YouTube page if you don't see the video. There you go. Yeah, the, the 5000 series and the 6000 series weren't the best. But, um... The M1 chip, you know what? I was very critical, and as I as I say this, I'm gonna I'm going to uh, bring in my webcam back into the little capture thingy here. So, you get a picture in picture. If it wants to work, come on. There we go. Um, let me just move this around a bit too. So I was very critical. I did a video uh, that some of you probably saw about the M1 uh, Macintoshes that were announced, and I was a bit I was a bit critical of them. 
And with with those machines, I was critical of them because of the port selection and the non-upgradable memory and the limited memory that was available to them. But I have to admit, I am very tempted at the Mac Mini. I'm not going to buy this revision. Let let that be noted. Um, unless someone something some one of them unless one of those machines drops in my lap, I'm not going to buy one of them. Um, I'm very curious about the next revision. Very, very, very curious. Uh, exactly what Matt said. Uh, don't want to get Core duo again. Exactly. I, in 2006, I bought a Core Duo iMac. A few months later, they came out with the Core 2 Duo. Oof, that stunk. But that machine did last me quite a while. Anyway, uh, I think they are extremely interesting. Uh, the benchmarks and results from what I've seen look stupid fast. Uh, Greg Rucke from Rucke Mods may be showing one off on his channel soon. Uh, Ken from the Computer Clan, I think, got uh, a Mac Mini and a MacBook Air, I think. Um, honestly, I think they're really cool. Um, and and I, I, am, I am very excited to see what the future of the Mac holds. Um, I, I want someone to play around with it and do all the benchmarks I would do for it, and that's really what, what I have to say about that. So I don't have one yet. Uh, I don't have any plans, immediate plans to get one, but uh, I hope to get one uh, in maybe the next few years. If, if that Mac Mini is as powerful as they say it will, it is, um, that'd be pretty awesome to edit video on, I would imagine. But um, I, I think I just want to be able to, to put more than 16 gigabytes of memory in there. I'd be, I'd be satisfied with 32. I would be. I don't need a 96 gigabytes of memory. If I could, if I could pay let's say $1,500 for a Mac Mini with 32, meg, uh, 32 gigs of memory and a decent SSD and a decent array of ports, I think that would be a sweet spot for me. But Yeah, you know what? Uh, hey, yeah, if I get another check, I'll do that. All right, so here we got our little Macintosh here. Now you can actually see the screen. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> what the hell, man? What the... Bruce! <laughs> What'd you do? <laughs> Oh my goodness. My goodness. All right, let's uh let's try this again. <laughs> I broke it. <laughs> Bruce as as they say in France, that is le bleep. Yeah, let's um uh, let's let's reboot that again. Now this machine has not been recapped officially. It is uh it is not uh not been uh, cleaned or anything like that. So this machine is a little finicky. Uh, no, this is just an ADB port. There's a phone net adapter back here. I was just playing around with those earlier. There it is. Woo! Phone net. We got a live one. There we go. I think what might have happened is, I don't know, maybe the SCSI 2SD thing was not plugged in all the way. I don't know. But we're rebooting. See if that resolves the problem. I'm sorry if I bored you, Dana. I'll have to start talking like this. Turn this thing around. Um, no, wait. I You say that and I giggle. That's the opposite way around. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Booting this up. This is a Macintosh 2CI. Um... This is a machine that I just put some memory in a few minutes ago. 32 megabytes of memory. It does not have the cache card in there, so it's going to be a little little sluggish, I guess. Uh, I do have a cache card somewhere. I just had the... There was like two caps on there. I think I took the caps off. I didn't put the caps on there. Um, but yeah. It's booting. It boots It, it boots stupid quick in the System 6, and we're, we're going to play around with that in a second. Because, oh man. It is stupid fast in there. I just want to show you how this machine runs in System 7. Then we're going to put System 6 on here. It's going to blow you away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I was going to show you the about this Mac screen, and it bombed on me. Let's try it again. Yep, now it's OK. Cool. All right, so we got whopping 32 megabytes of memory here. Why can't I move that window? There we go. And yeah. It was food related. Okay. <laughs> you have a horribly neglected 2CI. Well, maybe we could fix it up for you. That'd be nice. All right. So yeah, we have 32 megabytes of memory built into the to the machine here. Uh, ooh, easy color paint. Nobody likes seeing me draw. 
when I do this, these streams are like, hey, it's a little boring watching you draw. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. Not not because I'm a jerk, just because I wanted to, to show you the colors of this machine. And of course, I have to draw the little uh, Mac OS icon, smile, whatever the heck he's called. Because that I think it's a it's a it's a law that uh, you know I have to draw it every single time I open up one of these little programs. And yep, there he goes again. He's drawing a thing. Um, the color is going to be all off, but oh, get a little lag here. Lag. That's more greenish than we don't we don't we don't have a large selection of colors here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. And there we go. Please don't sue us, Apple. There we go. Isn't that pretty? It has colors! Yeah, it sounds like some uh, electrolytic goo that's on that board there. So you might want to uh, get that cleaned and serviced. Uh, if you want me to take a look at it, I can. I'm just backed up for a while, so I can't do it right away. But send me an email, mac84tv uh, at gmail.com, or go to uh, mac84.net, click on the modern button, and then click on services. You can follow that form there. Uh, a million psychedelic colors, man. Exactly. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I, I, Adrian puts out a ton of videos. Um, I just don't have time to watch them all. I'd love to, but... Um, yeah, gotta gotta order caps. Um, I highly suggest. I know microscopes are stupid expensive. Get one of those little USB ones just to magnify things a little bit, Ashton. Uh, I think that'll very much help you uh, when you're looking at those caps because sometimes it's a very small issue, especially if the capacitors have eroded a trace. So do that. All right. Um, yeah. So that's easy color paint. You've all seen that before. Let me see if I have anything on here fun that we could run. A fun run. Uh, I think we've played this before. This is a fun one. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna just stream myself playing games. I, I swear. This is only gonna be a minute or so. So you're like this little tank guy. And you have to shoot the enemies. Oops. And there's this little radar thing you could loosely follow. Oop, I'm spinning around. Why am I spinning around? I think I got hit. I think that's why. Gotcha. I remember playing this on my aunt's uh, Performa. Because I think it came with the demo version of it. <clears throat> Oops. Thank you, Trina. Oh, come on, he disappeared. That's no fair. Oh. Ah, kablamo. Spect spectra? Spectra? Yeah, whatever. It, 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 however you say it. The James Bond movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that. Um, oh, I forgot. I don't even know what's in this. I, I doubt it's going to... Well, I, let's see. Uh, I made a... So, Brian, if you're still here, Brian... Probably not. Brian probably went to sleep. Smart smart man. Um, Brian uh, got a Macintosh 2VX that I picked up for him. And this was a hard drive that I imaged of it. I have no idea what's on here. No idea what's on there. And we don't need to verify it. I just want to see what's on that drive image. We got it to boot up, I think, and I imaged the drive and gave him the system. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't honestly look at this. It was just sitting on my SCSI 2SD adapter here. Ah, yes, Battle Zone. That's a good one. Uh, where'd it go? There it is. Let's see what we got. What we got? What we got? Oh, we got Kid Picks. Oh, Kid Works. I remember having this in school. Kid Works. Uh, word munchers. Practice, okay. 
Uh, ooh, the print shop. Untitled folder. Wow, this is the old version. Oh, ooh, ooh, what's it? What's this? Is, this is full of goodies. Virex After Dark After Dark Files. Ah, oh, the Disney edition. Oh, that's. Oh, I'm gonna install that. Heck yeah. Uh, Super Clock. Awesome. All right, let's. Uh, yeah, let's let's install After Dark on here. I mean, what's a Mac without some type of screensaver on it? Come on. And we're gonna just copy this. Print a duck. Well, uh, my image writer's all the way over there. If I print it, all you're gonna hear is a bunch of noise, and then I'll show you the end result. That's kind of boring. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it will not uh, recognize 2020 without that set clock uh, control panel or set date, whatever it's called. Um, and uh, that's on the SCSI 2SD adapter, but I'll, I'll turn it on and uh, you'll notice that sometimes it just crashes the machine. So, <laughs> so before I reboot here, because I'm installing After Dark, before I reboot, I'll launch that. We'll see if it crashes the machine or not. But there's no PRAM battery in here, so it doesn't really matter if I'm setting the clock not now or not. Um, Lunatic! But yes, I do I do have that lovely uh, Image Writer LQ printer now. I had to lift it and move it to the other side of the basin so I can make room on the table behind me. But I will be doing something with it. I will be doing a video of it. Uh, I think I'm going to print out my new banner when I get 4,000 subscribers, when I do that giveaway. Rem note to self, Stephen, do that giveaway video soon so you can actually announce it. Um, and then, well, announce it publicly on not a live stream. Uh, and yeah, we do that. Uh, I think that's how I'm going to print that. All right, let's see where that set date thing is. It's in one of these folders, I think. Hopefully. Let's just do a search. Nope. All right, well, it's not on this SD card, but I did have it. Let's just reboot anyway. I love that startup chime. A few weeks ago on MacGeck, we did a little uh, compilation of the startup chimes. Dana and uh, Greg were showing off the startup chimes, talking about their favorites and stuff. That was really cool. You know, you forget that there were so many odd ones out there, like the Macintosh 20th Anniversary one and stuff like that. The first first Power Mac revisions uh, had some different ones. The um, What was the one that had a bit of a different chime to it? Some of the performance had different chimes to them. Very, very interesting. You, you, you sort of forget about that stuff. And then it's like, oh, yeah, I remember. Oh, there's that IBM disc. Oh, I, I wish my 840AV worked. There's that IBM disk. I had this, this MS-DOS boot disk, and it flew out of something, and it fell. So now I know where that is. Cool. I really need to, to get my 840AV working, but I am just slammed in other repair work right now. I, I, I cannot work on my own stuff currently, so. I got someone the other day that wanted me to recap an analog board for an iMac G3. Thank you, Tobias, for uh, hanging out. No worries. Ah, uh, yes, the, the car crash death chime. Um, they wanted me to recap an analog board for an iMac G3. And uh, they wanted me, they wanted to ship me the entire iMac. And I said, look, um, I'm all for trying to fix things. But A, I hate working on CRTs. And B, that thing is going to destroy itself in the mail. So I politely declined Uh, you might be able to fix the power supply or get a replacement at least. Alright, what we got here? What we got here? We got Starry Night, of course, the classic. Classic screensaver here. It slowly builds up a city. Little blinking lights, very cool. Um... Now this is the Disney pack, so we got a bunch of Disney stuff in here. We got uh, 
What is this? Haunted? I think there are a bunch of ghosts that pop up. Oh, we'll do the toasters. Don't you worry, Mike. Ah, Star Trek After Dark. Now, when we were kids, we used to just wait for the computer to go to sleep and watch these screensavers because they were the Disney ones are stupid entertaining. I mean, the animation is really nice. Um, they had sound effects and stuff like that. I mean, it's really, really well done. Yeah, this is more of a slow one. I think this just like, yeah, plays jungle noises. Uh, just shows some uh, imagery there. Let's go to, uh, let's see, uh, I don't remember this one. Fireworks? Okay. Oh, okay, this is like the Disney castle, I guess, and there's supposed to be fireworks. <laughs> Imagine if you were in an office and someone left their screensaver on, and it was this one, and all you heard were the fireworks for like eight hours a day. That'd probably drive you crazy. And that cash card would have been great right now. All right. Um, oh, this I always remember doing this one. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're familiar with the the you know 1940s Fantasia film. Uh, and there's the Mickey Mouse dressed up as the Sorcerer's Apprentice guy, and they're all the like the brooms with the buckets and stuff. This is basically that, and he you know summons the buckets and the whole screen fills with water. And I, again, the animation of this stuff, I mean, this was on four floppies if I recall correctly, and you know, the, these artists just created this stuff obviously from original drawings and stuff. They use those basis, but very cool, very cool. Oh, bad dog. Yeah, that's a good one. Let's see what's on here. Oh, can of worms. Classic. Classic can of worms. Here we go. <laughs> oh, there's no sound. The sound is is half the fun of it. Let's 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 do that. <laughs> Hopefully you could hear it. I'm trying to turn this machine without it freezing on me. Munch, 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 munch. Yeah, it's, it's hard not to use the flying toasters, because uh, they are so fantastic. Dominoes? I don't remember this one. Huh. Okay. I have Boris. Uh, Boris! Oh, they're, they're kitty cats. Oh, this one's cool. I don't remember this one. Number of cats, one. No, we need more cats. Maximum cats! Oh, that's cute. Oh, and they chase after the butterflies. Ha! <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, I don't know. YouTube is weird. Refresh it? Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Sorry about that. Everything looks green on my end, so. Oh, your mom had a... Oh, you, you bought a flying toaster tie? Oh, I am jealous. That is awesome, Justin. Oh, yeah. We're going to go to fish. Fish is a good one. Uh, down the drain? Oh, I remember this. Whee! Sorry, this has just turned into uh, After Dark fun. Number of fish. Let's just go normal. And we gotta pump up the volume, obviously. Uh, th now this is what I remember on my aunt's Performa. She had After Dark, and I remember seeing the fish a lot, so I think that's what she, she put on the screensaver a lot. Oh, this is just a lot of fun. 
I know. Flying toasters. Let's see. We got. We need multiple objects here. We got 32 megabytes of memory. Let's just do it up. There we go, Mike. <laughs> They're cruising too. That's not bad. Ah, I love it. Yes, I will, Adam. Thank you for stopping by. Nice toast, yes. I'll have a sandwich on that toast. Looks good. Turbo toasters. You can make them black and white if you'd like to replicate your Macintosh SE. YouTube has been having problems over the past few days. I don't know what's really going on with it. All I could suggest is quit your browser, try it again. What is this? Press caps lock to enter interactive mode. Interesting. Uh, I have no idea what this is. Oh, okay. Vector lines. Uh, messages. Huh. Maybe that explains where this computer came from, unless that's a default message. Interesting. Moan Man. Here's Moan Man. Let's uh, clear the screen first. And your grass grows. Play Lunatic Fringe. Is that an After Dark module? I'm not familiar with that one, Madeline. Oh, is an After Dark Asteroids module. Oh, okay. I should read the chat. Let's uh, see if it's on there. Yeah, there it is. There it is. How did I miss that? All right, let's look at the keys here. Oh, we're going to play this now. Here go the next eight hours of the stream. All right, turn left. All right, let's just do the keypad here. Uh, fire is command. Um, thrust is eight. So four, four and six, left and right. Thrust is five. Turbo thrust is eight. And command is shoot. Okay. And you know, let's let's actually turn that on. Because I don't want that window in the way. Uh, sleep corners? Yeah. Let's do it. Whoops. Oh, damn it. I moved the mouse and it got angry. Press caps lock to enter. Okay. Oh no! Wait, I'm going too fast! <laughs> Whoa! Whoa, way too fast! Alright, that's uh. Now the LCD screen I'm using, unfortunately, the the lamp is dying in it, so it's it's actually very hard to see because everything's black. Whoa, 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 ah! Why can't I hit that thing? Maybe you can't destroy the asteroids? <laughs> Unlike asteroids? All the balls are power-ups. Oh. <laughs> Woohoo. I am vulnerable. Okay. Tell me something I don't know. Wee. Oh. Oh, it's uh, it's lagging a little bit. <laughs> I was spinning around too long. And the computer got very angry at me. Oh, or maybe it's just maybe that's just the way it is. Now I'm just spinning. I'm just spinning around. 
Ah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to play this on a computer where I can actually see the screen better. Because this image is, as you can tell by the stream, very dim. On It's being recorded great, but... Oh, that's a good, that was a good one. That was a good one. Let's just see what else is on here. Zot. What is Zot? Oh, lightning. I used to be afraid of this because I didn't like storms when I was a kid. Uh, 2CI. Macintosh 2CI. I wish my 2CX worked. I wish it did. Alright, what else was on that, uh... We got print shop on that disc image, I think. Let me know if I'm boring you guys. Hopefully I'm not. Hopefully I'm not. I just want to see what uh, other things are on here. Spheres. I could see if it has spheres. Why the heck not? Let's take a look. Let's see. Yes, it does. All right, let's try it. <laughs> Mike's falling asleep. We better wake him up. Oh, wow. This is pretty cool. Use all of that graphics horsepower. Yeah, and this monitor is great, too. It has a uh, composite video, S-video, VGA, and DVI. So I'll be sad when it does go, but maybe I can fix it. All right, let's see um, where that disk image is. There it is. And uh, that's what I want to see, a print shop. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Version 1.3.2 from 1986. How about that? This is before Print Shop Deluxe. And I remember, I remember this screen before we got the Print Shop Deluxe version. I remember, because I remember this. Banner. Oh, let's make a sign. <laughs> Uh, this would probably fly on System 6. Oh, boy. Oh. What time is it? Oh, it's 10 o'clock already. How long have we been going here? Jeez. It's uh, 2 hours and 48 minutes. Oh, boy. Yeah, I, I don't think it likes this version. Oh, I had to double click. All right. Um, I'm gonna make that bold. Make a shadow. Uh, select graphics. Oh, we got a bunny. We need the bunny. Oh man, I so remember. I remember these. This is crazy because, honestly, I, I played around with Print Shop Deluxe more recently, but I for, totally forgot that there was an older version of it. I totally forgot. That's right, there's the, the bunny. That's right, you could choose four. Oh my goodness. Let's do the cake. I like that duck. And we'll do the elephant. Alright, so I selected the graphics. What, what graphic layout? That's right. Um, there's my elephant. And we're going to put a bunny over here. And then Mr. Goose is coming along. He's like, quack. And everyone gets cake. <laughs> I love it. You know what? 
I think this is too perfect not to print to the image writer. Let's do it, boys. Guys and gals, let's do it. Let me get up. Let's turn it on. Oh, I have to feed the paper in it. I used to have an extension cable. I used to have a printer extension cable. Um, I don't know where it went. Hold, please. Ah. Um, I think that's it. Yes. This cable is stupid useful. And it is just a a uh, serial printer extension cord. So for a Mac, at least, so I'm plugging it into the other side of the printer. I'm gonna plug it in to the logic board here. All right, all right, Trino. Yeah, go to bed now because you're gonna hear some screeching of the printer, and that'll probably wake you up. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. All right, let's go to Chooser. Oh boy. We have 32 megs of memory. What the heck are you talking about? All right, let me let me save this. I think I saved already. Let me just save it and quit it. We need our image writer. It is plugged in to our printer port. <laughs> Good night. Me. Uh, Apple Talk, yeah, sure. We don't need Apple Talk right now. Probably eating up our memory. We don't need you anymore, man. This is going to make a lot of noise. <laughs> oh, it's worth it. It's worth it. All right, we have Welcome to Mac 84. Let's put the date on here somewhere. So today is the 18th. Oh, no, I don't want to put it there. Um, fonts. Oh, no, it has to be Chicago. I mean, it has to be Chicago. I, I guess I get like well, I could write on it. I guess oh, we'll just let's do. Uh, Adjust printer. Oh, wait, what are you doing? No, stop. No. What are you doing? I'm sure that had some purpose back in the day. Ugh, but all it did was just like print out garbage. All right, let's just print this on. Number of copies. Just one for now, please. The paper got stuck. Hold on.
Okay. What happened was, what happened was the thing got stuck. Oh no, Dana, feel better, man. Yeah, don't die on us, please. Feel better, sir. May the soothing sounds of this printer rock you to sleep. It's probably just food poisoning like I had a few months ago. Scared the crap out of me. Hopefully you could hear that melody in the background. I love that sound. get that page out. <laughs> oh, Dana, feel better, man. Hope hopefully this the soothing images of uh, of these these dot matrix creatures will uh, will will soothe you to rest if I could actually swap the darn thing here. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> it did get a little crumbly. That's what it was doing before. But uh, <laughs> I think this is going to be my new channel artwork. <laughs> Welcome to Mac 84. We got cakes, we got bunnies, ducks are cool, and so are elephants. That's... <laughs> That's the identity of this channel. This is the channel's coat of arms. Cake, a rabbit, a duck, and an elephant. <laughs> oh, boy, I've lost it. I've lost it. It's just after you go over the three-hour mark, it's... It's all down from there. <laughs> it printed out pretty quick, too. It did. Well, now that we have it plugged in, might as well print something else. I'm... Oh, no, wait, that's right. It, um... The, the paper feed thing got a little screwed up there, so. Yeah, see it, like, it ripped the top of it. You know, I'll... Alright, so I have I have three potential things I'm giving away. I think what I'll do is I'll... I'll, uh... Print, well, I'll print out a better one that's not all wrinkly. And maybe we'll give some some silly things away. I had the idea to, to do printouts and stuff and put on my Etsy or whatever. I don't know if that, I'm still gonna do that but uh, I was gonna do like greeting cards and silly stuff like that but anyway anyway yes yeah, so that's that's our uh, that's our thing there uh, ready made what's ready made no oh open one up that you already made yeah sure oh. there has to be one somewhere Garage sale. <laughs> Come look. Us over. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, man. This, oh, so you have to go to ready-made. This, this is taking me back. Meeting. Meeting. Merit. <laughs> Good work. <laughs> I would, Dana. The LQ is on the other side of the basement, which is why, which is why, um, I will have to apple talk it. Talk, apple turk it. Apple talk it. Apple turk it. I will have to apple talk network it, and we can we can print and annoy the rabbits on the other side of the basement. <laughs> 
Yeah, the LQ has a lot of uh, have a lot has a lot of uh, better quality, I guess. Uh, the it's a twenty one or twenty four pin thing or something like that. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's better than the Panasonic one I had, and I thought that was good. But yeah, Apple Torque it. All right, let's choose this one. I oh, know. Uh, quiet, please. What the heck is that? It's a piece of t oh, <laughs> it's a pillow. Uh, I could do phone net. That's probably the easiest because I have phone cable. I thought this this so this is a guy's head and there's a pillow. I thought that was a piece of toast. That's <laughs> hey David. And David's here. That means it's time to end the stream because he's a late. He's always late to the party. No, I'm, j I'm joking, David. Um, welcome to the stream. Yeah. So we're, we're, this is print shop version one three two. Let's check on ye old Macintosh Garden here. I am curious what version they have. I'm sure they have this one there, but never hurts to check. Because Macintosh Garden is an awesome website. And I'm curious what versions are on here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Ooh, someone scanned the manual. That's cool. Uh, what version is this, though? Let's download and find out, I guess. No, can't be reached. No, that's sad. Um, added three more screenshots. All right, but it doesn't say the version number. I'm curious if this is slightly a different version than what's on the Macintosh Garden. Nobody needs no stinking manual. I would buy a toast pillow. <laughs> All right, so let's 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 download this. What the heck not? Um, and I'm going to. How am I going to get this over there? Well, let's just unarchive that first. And let me move that over to an older Mac I have here. I, mo I wonder if I could run that in classic mode just to open it up. I have a Tiger Mac Mini here. I think it's a, it's asleep right now. So let me wake it up. Wake up! Wake up! Ah! The power button's always on the opposite side of the computer. No, you're not lame. That's a cool idea. Here we go. We have disturbed the mini from its slumber. So then I could remote desktop to it. And I could try and open up that that program. Because I'm curious if it's the same version that I have. No, it's not. I don't have the installed disk, but I have an installed version. So. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. Sure, why not? We'll just use that. And you're not going to really be able to see this because it's going to be on my other screen here, so apologies. This will only take a minute and I will talk you through what we're doing. So what I've done is I copied over that file I downloaded from Macintosh Garden and I have this old G4 Mac Mini running Tiger. And what's nice about that is I could run Mac OS Classic here, run Mac OS 9, um, and what that will allow me to do is to see if I can just open this here and, and run the program. So that's starting up Classic. Uh, it opened up the disk image. Let me see if it tells me what version it is. Um, let's see. Maybe if I do a Command I. More info. It says from 1990, so this may be slightly a newer version. Who knows? We will find out hopefully in a moment. I'm trying to sleep over here. Sorry. I'm sorry. 
Let me turn the, the image writer to the quiet mode. Oh, wait. There is none. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Let's open this up here. Don't crash. Don't crash. Don't crash. So this on the left side on this Macintosh is running uh, 1.3.2. The one for Macintosh Garden is version 1.3.2. Okay. <laughs> Same exact thing. I got a little excited. I thought uh, I thought maybe we had a unique version here. But that's okay. Saves me the trouble of backing it up and all that stuff. And now I can quit that. And there we go. We can close out of that. Okay, cool. Padded muffler boxes. I don't think that's going to help. I think that's appropriate. <laughs> uh, <laughs> quiet mode disables the printer functionality. There is like there is one mode that I think is quieter, but to call it a quiet mode is a bit silly. All right, so that's I'm really uh, really uh, winding down here. Don't know what else to show. Um, I have that. I have this here. This is my uh, floppy MU that I purchased. And there's this case that I have to put together. Maybe we'll end the stream by me putting that case together because apparently that's a pain in the butt to do. And why not do it with some company here because you can laugh at me. Boy, I gotta get up early tomorrow, unfortunately. I have to get up early a lot recently. Not, not fun. Um, not fun. All right, let's move the little Macintosh over here. Okay. And let's uh, torture ourselves by trying to put this thing together. Uh, let me go to here. Oops. Again. Touching the wrong buttons in the wrong order. Not cool. All right. Oh, that's right. I didn't even put the camera on the tripod fully because I'm an idiot. There we go. Sorry. I know you guys are probably getting really dizzy when I do that. But. Oh yeah, I bet that is not. So we got our frosted ice acrylic case for floppy MU model C. And yeah, there is a there is a guide of how to put that together. So we're not going to be stupid. We're going to open that guide. And that is. Okay. <laughs> you will learn from my misadventures. I thought you were supposed to be asleep, Dana. All right, we're gonna we're gonna use our printed thing as our as our little table here. Um, lay the acrylic pieces flat. Um, I hope this is soothing somehow to you, Dana. C is for cookie. Okay. Get all the little bits out of there. <laughs> oh boy. It's like Legos, but less fun. All right, so <laughs> we're gonna put all this together somehow. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'm gonna scratch this up, I just know it. So it's like, why should I even bother taking off the, the acrylic thing? Okay, so <laughs> let's all put this on one side. I can always buy a replacement case, I guess. All right, Lego, but with now with more sharp edges, jagged, rusty metal bit in every bite. All right, lay out the acrylic. These instructions are for the current generation as of September 2020. Sandwich style acrylic case. Instructions for the previous generation flush 
edge case are available here. Well, when did I buy this? When's the shipping date on this? October. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was like, wait, like, wait a second. Wait a second. Okay. All right. Confirm all the pieces are present. Please note the two long side pieces are interchangeable. Okay. So let's lay this out here like it's telling us to. Let's follow the instructions like a nice person here. So we got, got one of these Space Invader looking things here. Uh, this guy there. Uh, this guy there. This guy. This guy. Four of those pegs. And then this square thing. That I don't know where that goes to. But all right. All right. So confirm all the pieces are present. Yep. Use a fingernail to scrape up one corner. Okay, well, let's gonna do that. And uh, so I guess I guess we have to do this on both sides. My fingernails aren't working. Of course, I cut all my fingernails like just earlier today, except my two thumbs. So. Come on. It's tricky. What if I lick it? That probably won't help. I do have a scalpel, but I don't want to scratch it. <laughs> no, I don't have one of those. Alright, there we go. Alright. Ooh, shiny. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do the other side, too. So this is some, like, thing that people like, right? You peel off things slowly and mess it up. <laughs> so this is the case to the floppy MU. Which I'll be putting together. Oh, it is nice. Oh, that just, that's just horrible. What, am I doing this wrong? No. It just, it's got some... Yeah, there's, there's some little parts in here. Like, the little Mac guy has tons of little bits in him. How am I going to get those off? Alright, well. That's going to be fun. Because look at all the bits that are stuck on him. Between the letters. Alright, I could deal with that later. I just want to get the uh, floppy MU in here before I like break it. And, like scratch the screen or something like that. Laser etched over the paper. Ah, okay, that explains a lot. I could use a toothpick or something later to get that out. All right, so this will be this will be easier then. So who else has a floppy MU? I know Dana just got one. I'm not leaving this stuff on. I, I, I it's it's supposed to be clear and fancy looking, so it's gonna be clear and fancy looking. It would have worked fine if it, it just didn't want to... There we go. I just have to be more delicate as I'm pulling this off and it'll be fine. I was just stupid before. There. Perfect. Slightly faulty. Just slightly. This is a case for a floppy MU. That's one of these little things that emulates a floppy disk drive. And we're going to put it in its case because I've been using it without the case and I'm very much afraid that I'm going to break it and I don't want to have to buy another one. Throw all those things in the bin. Oh boy, we got more to go, huh? 
These are tinier at least. At least I'm doing this with company. So when I screw up, you could watch me curse at myself. Oh, come on. That's not fair. Yours only works on the HD 20 mode? That is... Maybe you have to just flash the firmware. Um, you could emulate pretty much anything. A hard disk, um, an Apple II drive, a Macintosh drive, multiple sizes. Um, their website at Big, Big Mess O Wires. Big Mess O Wires. They have all the details there. They know, they know more about it than I do. But very handy tool. Very handy. I would exchange it because you never know if you ever get into anything else and you're like, oh damn, I wish this thing worked and I don't, now I'm going to have to wait for them to send me a new one or whatever. But that's just me. That's just how I work. Sorry, this is not so exciting, but Dana, now you know what you're going to have to go through. Yes, do you have a pre-peeled version? I would have paid $5 more for the, the pre-peeled version. Eye opener. I don't know. I don't recall that. An eye opener? Process IDE cable. I I'm I'm drawing a blank. Remind me what the eye opener is. Is it a tool for opening things? After three o'clock my brain just goes down the toilet, so. <laughs> Can you hire a peeler to do it? Oh, the um, the uh, um, net pliance. Yes, yes, yes. The net pliance thing. Yeah, that's still sitting exactly where it was sitting a while ago. Um, I have not touched it. I've been swamped doing repairs and busy working and life stuff. Uh, I have not gone back to that. I have not, because I, I think, from what I recall, I'll need to make a special IDE cable or something for it. And while that does sound fun, everybody, um, I, that's not on the, the, the most top of my priority list here. Uh, I want to try and square away getting a camera before the end of the year, which is fast approaching. Especially with uh, some of the electronic sales and stuff like that that happens during this time of year. I kind of want to get that out of the way. Oh, why don't you email me the link to that cable and I will consider it if it's not a stupid amount of money because I, I honestly will probably boot that thing up once and that'll be that. <laughs> like, oh yeah, it's slow. Next project. All right, we're almost done here. Sorry, guys. Or you could just put the link in the chat here. I don't, I don't. Oh no, that's right. YouTube doesn't like the links in chats. It'll just gonna scrub everything out of it. Nine dollars. Eh, that's not too bad, I guess. <laughs> Nine dollars with eighty dollars shipping. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm gonna assemble this, and then we're gonna wrap up the stream here, cause. Uh... This has taken way too long, and I apologize. I thought this would be much faster. I should have done this beforehand. But I will have a new video out on Friday sometime. I like releasing videos on Fridays. Um, so I hope to have that out on Friday. Old Apple Interactive TV set-top box working. Well, Matthew, I got mine to boot up. Asterix. I got mine to boot up into System 
But the only way I know it actually booted to System 7.5 is because I put a SCSI 2SD adapter with a hard drive in it, you know, like a hard drive, and I got it to boot to a system that booted before and it showed up on my network. There's no video drivers out for that thing. I got one, like, in the early 2000s, Matthew, and I've been tinkering around with it since. And yes, I like Oddware of the Apple variety. And I have I have the prototype that is well known, and then I have a very uncommon prototype, very uncommon prototype, that um, is, is very much not final. Uh, I actually did a video of it on my YouTube channel, and I did a live stream not too long ago. So, Matthew, if you want to check those out and see how I got the thing to boot and everything... Um, I would suggest checking out that live stream. I think, if I recall correctly, in that live stream, I might not gotten it to boot, but I did like the, the the day after, and I posted some stuff on Twitter. How did this piece get stuck there? there we go. Yeah, the Apple the Apple interactive set top box thing is a very cool thing. Um, unfortunately. The information that it pulled off of the network to uh, get itself to work is obviously no longer a thing. Um, so getting video out on those things is problematic. Sorry, Joe. I don't think I have one. Uh, I have a quantum drive or no, a rod -eye drive. That's one of the big ones, but I don't have any quantum ones, I don't think. Sorry. Camera connection kit for the 30-pin interface. Oh, you mean the um, the old uh, iPads? I don't know if I have one of those. Why don't you send me an email, Matthew? If I have one, I'm not going to accept it because I don't, I don't want to take something away from somebody else that could be using it. But um, I think I think I had one for my iPod and my iPad. I think. I'm not sure. If you want to email me, Mac84TV, TV as in television, at gmail.com, I'd be happy to take a look. Okay, we got all the pieces. Yay! Thank thank God. All right. Uh, position the bottom piece. There we go. Okay, so let's see. Uh, position the bottom piece you're looking at with the glossy surface and its frosted side underneath. Okay. Which is the frosted, uh, the frosted side there. Hmm, frosting. Okay. Uh, underneath, the longest two cutouts should be on the bottom edge. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that goes like that. How about that? Um, can I, da, 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 da. Did the Apple TV interactive watch have a burned in ROMs with a custom GUI, or are they all lost of time? How much common did they have with the Pippin? The Pippin was PowerPC based came years after the Apple TV interactive box. The Pippin was officially licensed by Apple um, and was but was uh, produced by uh, Bandai in Japan. Uh, the Apple TV does, the Apple interactive box has ROMs just like a, a, a Macintosh LC does. They're on a, on a chip. So the ROM is there. That's not the problem though. The video drivers and all the other information, the software is, is the problem. All right, cool. Thank you very much. All right, let's scroll down here. So press the... F oh, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, press the four side pieces into the surrounding... Oh, I see. So that's why you had to lay it out a certain way. It helps when you follow instructions, kids. All right, let's uh, set the frosted side down. It's the frosted side down. Uh, this is the frosted side down eBay is going to be your best bet, unfortunately, with that stuff. Um, I know that's not what people like to hear, but that stuff is hard to find. Unless you go to, like, Macintosh uh, groups on Facebook or something, eBay is probably your best bet with that stuff. It's hard to tell in these small pieces which side is frosted and which side isn't. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna experience how tricky that is. I'm sure. All right, so let's let's do this here. So, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. all right, so this goes in. Wait, no, 
this no this this goes in like that no what the heck I got these swapped around that's why oops oops oopsie I made an oopsie all right all right so that's there and then this one goes like this wait no wait yeah oh okay that was a little confusing uh, this guy goes like this Oh, don't worry. That is one of the reasons why I want to get a good camera set up because I want to record that G3 all in one and all the crazy stuff I'm going to do to it because, man, that's a cool machine. Trust me. Yeah, be patient. More stuff is coming. But um, fun times for that. I, I'm, I have a lot of stuff planned for that machine. Trust me. All right. So uh, let's plug in the cable here. <laughs> the cable's like lifting the, the whole thing off here. All right, let's put that there. Um, no, I didn't get a component tester. This is the uh, the, the floppy MUJ. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so this is this is the, the floppy MU. Um, this is the little case that goes on it, which uh, is a little harder than it looks to install. So <laughs> I'm following a, an instruction set there. And I'll show it to you closer up once I get all the pieces in here. Um, it's it's a little weird of how this, this goes together. Um, but I mean, that's, that's just how it is, I guess. All right, so this goes like that. Okay. All right. Oh, and then the, then we got these little button guys. Place the four plungers in. Oh, and then you put the top on. Okay, so all right, one, two, three, and four. This is all very shoddy looking, but I'm sure with the screws in it, it'll look fine. Nope, come on. Getting everything lined up is going to be... No! <laughs> How did that happen? Uh, let's try and put that side piece back on. I need to, I need to like, wiggle that. Because the, the top buttons are not aligning to let this case close. There we go. Maybe. There we go. Yay. Oh, thank you, Justin. I greatly appreciate that. Eep. You get that is that is gonna help me buy. Um, well, obviously I have to put more funds towards that, but <laughs> you know what I mean. The sentiment is greatly appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, where do you put the screws? <laughs> oh, I have to take. Ah, oh, darn it. I didn't take the film off of the uh, screen. You know what? I'm going to leave the film on the screen because I'm going to end up breaking it or scratching it. Let me just take this little thing off there. Because I don't, I don't need it. I don't need to be sharp. Or how do I? Come on. Yeah, because knowing this, knowing me, I'm going to end up breaking this, uh, or, or, or leaving it in a bag or something, and it's going to get scratched up, and I don't want to. And of course, now I got to redo this part. Ah! But it's not like I'm going to be watching movies on this screen or anything. It's purely a functional thing, so I don't care if it's uh, if it has a, a film over it. Okay, that was much Oop, now the left side is falling out no 
Go back, please. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> uh, send an email with pics of the adapter after this stream, which you can find such a stand for my Emacs. Yeah, the swivel stands for the Emacs do come up quite often on eBay, and sometimes they're only like 20 bucks. So you just got to be patient with that stuff, and, and you will find them. But, um, yeah. Um, all right, so I got to carefully hold this sandwich together and put these screws in through the bottom. Let me just do one corner right now. All right, Dana, so if you're still watching, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. I'm playing Return to Zork. Fun game. I use my Emac as a netboot server to netboot... Oh, you know what? That's something I want to mess around with. I have a I have an Xserve G5, thanks to my friend Jay here from the House of Moth. He was able to recap the Xserve's power supply for me. And now it works excellent. And uh, the version of the Mac OS I have on there still supports netboot. And uh, I assume I could just run... Uh, I, I know it's compatible with 9, so... Uh, Waiting on Tylenol. Okay. Um, what I can do is uh, hopefully just use that as a netboot server, which is nice. But that's something I want to play around with. Oh, Tiger is fan a fantastic, fantastic operating system. Really, really one of the most stable Macintosh operating systems in a while. All right. So I'm just tightening up these screws here. These plastic screws. Tighten that one. Okay, and then the last one over here. And then I'll show you guys a close-up of what this thing looks like. Thank you very much, Tara. I am a stable genius. <laughs> Alright, so that's that's what we assembled here, so. Yep, it's uh there's still wiggly, which is good. All right, so yeah, here's our here's our final assembled floppy MU. I just have to take the plastic out of there, but um, yeah, not bad. Very cool. Let's um, let's uh, get to the microscope camera because why the heck not? And I'll show you my attempt to uh, to maybe remove some of that stuff. Um, why isn't this show? OBS just hates me today. Nothing wants to work. Uh, the camera for the microscope doesn't want to work. All right, never mind. Screw that. We're not going to show it. Sorry. Uh, let me uh, let me keep reading. Sorry. I, uh, I skimmed through the chat here. You could use any pre 10.6 or 10.5. Don't call it a boot mania. Oh, okay, cool. Um, PowerBooks both have macOS 9.2 on them at the moment. That's a good system for those, but uh, 8.6 is also nice also. Yeah, it, it is It is like a little frosted case, obviously, but it, I do like the look of it. I thought maybe clear would be nice, but I do like the frosted. I would put LED lights in the case. Well, when it is on, there is a light, so that's good. Um, yeah, Xers are loud, which is why mine is in the basement, so it doesn't bother anybody but the bunnies. I don't think they mind. Um, I had a toothpick around here for when I was putting the, uh, the, uh, solder, uh, mask on. If it's still here, I think I'll use that to get the rest of the stuff over here. Maybe. I've never played with AUX. I've never had a machine that could support it that I was able to set up, uh, at the time. Um, not that I haven't played, haven't wanted to play around with it. I just never got around to it. Do you have a Holy Grail machine you need? I, nothing I need. I have a huge collection of crap already. Um, it would be cool to get like a Macintosh Portable or a 20th Anniversary Mac or something like that. But I, I don't need any of them unless it are, they're at a good price or someone's going to trade me something. I, I'm not like, oh my god, I need that. Uh, a Quadra 900 or the you know the 950s. I don't have those. Those would be cool. Um, but I'm not I'm not like actively looking for them because I I don't have a lot of space left. Trust me. Uh, Tara knows. 
<laughs> and so, so yeah. Okay, I mean, I'm just getting these with my fingernails. It's not, it's not too bad. I don't want to use a metal tool and scratch up the case I just put together. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's. I guess you could use a PC. Yeah, that's. I mean, sort of sacrilegious, but I guess if you don't care, a netboot server is a netboot server is a netboot server. So. Oh, this is coming out cool. Okay, and then we just have to do the little letters between the word floppy here. Okay, those are currently being removed. I almost, I almost like it with his little face outlined there, the little uh, Happy Mac guy. I do have a Mac museum. See, Tara's been here. Tara's a good, good old friend, and uh, she's seen all my crap in person. <laughs> oh boy. You know, yeah, I believe it. Mac would boot boot faster off of Ethernet probably if the if the disk array on the server is fast enough. But yeah, I, I almost like him having the little mask on there it's kind of cool i don't know maybe i should not leave it there but anyway let's uh let's test it we, we put the damn thing together let's put the macintosh uh and i don't know what this little square thing is for it wasn't in the uh it wasn't in the list here was it oh i know there's a smile underneath the mask i just i'm just being silly um yeah i don't know what this little cube is for this little guy. Oh, little cube will go over there for now. I will take the mask off because it, it does look a little silly. If I could peel that off correctly. I might need my tweezers because it's not uh, it's not coming off there. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's a, it's an oh, it's a perfect little Happy Mac. Oh. Oh, I know, Dana. Don't worry, they're bugging me too secretly. We're we're gonna just put that over here. I'm gonna I'm gonna give Mackie a little friend on 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 the back of him. There. <laughs> I save weird things. Okay, so let's let's. Uh... Oh boy. Get this machine back up here. And actually, what we're going to do is... Uh, we, don't, we don't need to use the external adapter here because this has an internal header we're just going to plug it into. Right. Now you're gonna see this computer boot up so fast. You're not even gonna after it does the memory check. Check this thing is gonna boot up stupid fast because we're gonna boot it up on system six. We're gonna boot it up on system six. This is, this is gonna go blazing fast, guys. So hold on to your hats. Hold on to your butts. Tara, you missed it earlier. We printed out... Where, where'd the printout go? We printed out my new coat of arms. <laughs> On a dot matrix printer that's older than I am. We printed out a coat of arms. Which is pretty neat. Alright, so let's get this machine turned on. Uh, paper out of the way. Okay. Alright, so let's uh, switch to the capture card thing in OBS here. 
And we are going to, well, we need the video cable plugged in. Don't we? Of course we do. Ah. And we need a power cable. And then we'll be good to go. All right, let's turn it on. All right, and then we got our little screen here, which is tilted. <laughs> the screen is tilted slightly, but whatever. It's I'm not opening up to fix it right now. Um, all right, so we'll, we we should see something on the screen in a moment or so. It's doing the memory check right now. There's 32 megs of memory in there, so it's going to take a little bit. But once it does, it should boot off of that SCSI drive at lightning speed. Watch it make a liar out of me. Sometimes you just have to reseat that SD card. There it goes. Boom! Boom! You see that? You see how fast that was? Now it's uh, it's loading in itself into a RAM disk, which I, I don't have to do, but it's just set up by default on this system. But you see how fast that was? That was stupid quick. Get some colors in here. All right, this system is stupid quick right now. <laughs> oh boy. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select a floppy disk here on our little floppy MU here. And um, we got some Macintosh stuff, we got some games. Ooh, Prince of Persia. Let's load that up. Let's see if that works. There it is. Prince of Persia Color. Well, so the SCSI 2SD is booting it. Let's just be clear. The SCSI 2SD adapter is booting the system, but the floppy MU I'm using as a floppy disk. But yeah, with the SCSI with the SCSI 2SD adapter on System 6, really quick. Uh, I do not have a Lisa or a Macintosh XL, so I do not have anything with a Twiggy drive, unfortunately. <laughs> M1 speeds on a Macintosh 2 CI. <laughs> now this is reading from the floppy. Uh, in hindsight, I probably should have copied it to the to the SD card before I launched the game. But uh, yeah. Still reading. Yeah, see there. There's a. Uh, there's two LEDs on it. One's a power LED and one's an access light LED. I love this game. Motorola One. <laughs> I love it. Let's see how terrible I am at this game. Let's see if I'm worse than Mike. Probably. Oh, come on. Again, I should have copied this to the hard disk. <sighs> it's not the computer's fault. It's the it's the user error. All right. Where where's the uh, controls here? I think it's command and the arrow to sneak. That's crouch. Was it control? Oh, option. Okay, option is a sneak. I don't know, we've been all over the place today. <laughs> we uh, just tested out, we just put the case together for our SCSI, t uh, our floppy MU. And now we're uh, testing out Prince of Persia. Oh, no. Yep, see if you hold down up, if you hold down up, you could dangle like that.
All right, let's go get the sword. And then we can fight the bad guy and lose. Slow and steady keeps you away from the spikes. That sound is still in my nightmares. I think there's a potion down there. There's a potion. Doesn't do anything on my full health anyway. Yeah, so we're just playing some Prince of Persia. Just gonna be as quick about this as I can be. had to avoid that button because I would have closed the gate as soon as I uh, got it. Oh, this is fun. Uh, this is Prince of Persia Color, I believe it's called, or Prince of Persia LC. You know, I'd, I'd say, I'd say 95, 96 is, and I'd have to look back at, at my notes and stuff from videos I'm making, but I'd have to say really around 1990, 90, 94 through 96 were very, very difficult times for them. Uh, I'd, I'd say they lost their way somewhere around there. I'd, I'd have to look at specific examples to make an informed uh, discussion. But yes, we have our sword now. And we could get it out by pushing, was it control? Where's control? Control? Maybe tab? Oh, I, no, I think the sword automatically comes out when you're about to fight. Did I just pause it? Well, I do. What happened? It, like, kind of froze up, but it didn't. Uh, is this the version that runs on the SE or Plus? Yes, so there's there's two versions of the game, but, um... What the heck? What, what, did I push the wrong button here? Is that seeking? No. Did it try to load the screensaver or something? Oh. Okay, now we're back. Yeah, their OS strategy was we're going to release Copland. And that didn't really go anywhere. Or Copeland, rather. That didn't really go anywhere. Their OS strategy was flawed from the beginning. Alright, so now we're going to go back. This game is all about memorization. See, I never, I didn't break any of those bricks on the way there, so now it was easier for me to get back. I didn't, I don't think I, I've read his book. I, well, I definitely haven't read it. I don't know if I have it. I have to check if I have a PDF of it or something. Uh, definitely something I should, I should read at some point. All right, here we go. Got 
Got him! Woohoo! <laughs> oh, I have to push the button. The poke of Zora. <laughs> Now we're just getting silly. Please don't be the copy protected version. Please. The copy protected version makes you guess what letters are in certain sentences in the manual. Yeah, he was he was uh, an interesting fellow. And you could see you could just see at the video where they introduced the twentieth anniversary Macintosh and Steve Jobs and Wozniak are there and Emilio's there and it's just it's just awkward as heck. Alright. Oh, yep, this is exactly what I was talking about, and this is what frustrated me as a kid. Drink the potion matching the first letter of the word two on line two of page fourteen of the manual. You know. You know. No. no. And I can't even save the game. Alright, where's Macintosh Garden? Do they got the manual? <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. I don't know if the Power Books did, to be honest. But I'm not an expert on those. It, it could very well just be have a bad have a bad uh, a bad cap somewhere would help if I could spell why is the Prince of Persia not coming up on here huh I guess Prince of Persia is maybe not on the Macintosh garden or maybe I have to search by the author to be more specific huh well, I tell you I don't love the copy protection but uh, kid cuts I never played that that's I'm screenshotting that um oh gosh this is gonna take forever to find yes buying next save the company if they didn't do that my goodness. Alright, Prince of Persia on CD ROM. Uh by downloads. Uh, Prince of Persia and Prince of Persia 2 Strategy Guide. That's not gonna help me. Oh, here's Prince of Persia. Oh, I remember the box! I think we actually had a photocopy of the box. Uh, Prince of Persia, da, 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 as usual, da, da. potion codes. Yes, I found it. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, see you later, Dana. Feel better, man. All right, so here's here's the codes that we got. We got we got our our codes here. So page fourteen, line two, word two. Fourteen, line two, word two. That is the letter R. There's the letter R. Yar. I think I got it, Bruce. The letter R. Yar. Page 14, line 2, word 2. I remember guessing it once and I was very excited. I'm going to save this as we get to level 2 because I'm not going to play level 2. I don't have that memorized. I'm going to fail. And it's it's late, so I'm probably going to wrap up the stream.
but um, I think I, I did pre pretty much everything I, I wanted to attempt on this stream, though. I failed making a a, a, a um, Terminator for the phone adapter. Well, I kind of succeeded, but need to work on that a little bit. Um, I assembled... Okay. I assembled the... Um, the uh, case for the floppy MU, not three hours. I have I have to work, unfortunately. Um, yeah, and yeah. Um, like, come on, come on, Macintosh. Let's let's get let's get going here. Um, what else did I do? Well, we put memory in this. We booted that up. Um, we tested it with System Six and System Seven, which was fun. We also played around with that digital camera, which you'll see in an upcoming video at some point. And. We looked at that weird IBM uh, laptop that I found. But uh, anybody have any questions or anything you'd like to see on the channel or any suggestions for a live stream or anything? Feel free to make a comment or you can email me again, uh, mac84tv at gmail.com. All right, let's go to save here because I think now I can save. There we go. Save game. Future Prince. Level. Whoops. Level. Two. I just put that on the. Oh, that's right. Just save it there. That's right. We're still running System Six. More iMac G3 videos. Well, you're in luck. I am working on a few. That is why I got that digital camera. That is why I got some other things. So that is that is very much in the process. How do you suggest adding modern Wi-Fi to a G4 era Mac running Mac OS Nine? Um. G4 Mac. Well, depending on the Mac, uh, you can use that original 802.11b airport card and just use an old airport Wi-Fi or, or an old compatible 802.11b hotspot. It would run slow, but... My Mac 2SI is being a real pain at the moment, Steve. Can you make it stop? Yes. Right, let's let's send out some positive vibes there. Let's, uh... Let's, oh, you know what? This, this always works, Bruce. If we go... Here, and we, we see so you have to talk the Macintosh's language. So if we open up just trying to type something funny for Bruce. I was just going to type Macintosh 2SI, please don't misbehave. <laughs> I couldn't even do that. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, yeah, I mean, buying an airport card is not going to be too expensive, honestly. Um, it, the G4 Emacs require airport extreme. You, you flip down the front of the optical drive and there's a slot for it. You can get them pretty pretty inexpensive. Hopefully your 2SI starts to behave, Bruce, because I got nothing. Why are you playing with an Apple Extended Keyboard, Steve? Playing Prince of Persia on an Apple Keyboard is a pain with the hours in line. It is, but the other one I have here also has it in line. And the other one I have there also has a deadline, and I am way too lazy to get my butt up and go onto the other side of the basement and get one with the inverted T. I'm just too lazy. That's all eBay. That's all. That's the, that's the, pretty much the excuse for everything around my channel. Laziness. Laziness. All right, I am going to end this stream. I greatly appreciate all the super chats, all the super stickers, all the likes, all the subscribes. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out for four hours. Jeez. Um, I have some videos coming up. Friday, I'm releasing a video. Um, it's about something uh, television related. It's going to be fun. And um, yeah, good luck on recapping the EMAC. Those are going to be fun. Um, I'm sure someone else has a guide online for it. I certainly don't. But I appreciate everybody watching. We're going to restart this Mac and shut it down. And uh, yeah, I guess I guess uh, that's about it. Um, but I was using Prince of Persia with the number pad, so I wasn't even using the arrow keys. But, all right, we're going to end this stream. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I'm going to have some more stuff out soon, and I greatly appreciate all the tips and everything. So, hope you have a good night. Stay safe, uh, and uh, take care. Bye-bye.